What are the lyrics? <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. <clears throat> Hold up. My throat is kind of all over the place. Tofu, it's on me. What's up? How y'all been? What is up, guys? Turn on the music. There you go. Yay. How's everybody been? I am so cold. <laughs> Fuck. I don't know why. I feel like every time it's every time I stream. I like I feel like I gotta I gotta <laughs> I gotta preface this. It's every time I stream, I I wake up, I'm like, alright, I gotta set up. I walk over to my to my desk and I'm like, gotta set up. And I'm like, god damn, it's so cold. It's very cold. <laughs> I am freezing. I like I've been wearing hoodies a lot more recently, mainly because of how cold it's been. Tell the world to stop being so cold, at least my side of the world. God damn. I just want it to be like a normal temperature where all I can wear is like basketball shorts and like, I don't know, maybe a t-shirt, maybe a tank top, but no, it it's either freezing cold or it's blazing hot and they, they never choose. They never, they, they never compromise. Sonami, don't worry. I just, I'm very, I'm also very tired as. I'm fucked up. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I, I'm at, I'm at the back end of, <laughs> I was going to say I was at the back end of my life. That's, <laughs> that's not right. But, uh, I, not, uh, am I, am I, I was going to say, I, I'm I'm not I was gonna say I'm not feeling 100% and then I stopped myself from saying that <laughs> Am I feeling 100% maybe <laughs> Who knows But yeah, I am My sleep has been fucking me up re still recently Recently, but still now Because this has been happening for a while. I don't know. I don't remember when it what happened? Oh. It was when I... It's been happening for a week now. <laughs> I've been sleeping like this for a week because it happened when I went out. I didn't go out. But when I was when I took the break on that Saturday last week. Which is today. Today is Saturday. But a week from now. A week before. Today's a week ahead from now. You You see what I mean, right? I'm not... A hundred percent. It's okay. Sleep more. I don't sleep either. Man. I can't. <laughs> I, I straight up. I can't. If I, if I sleep more, Sonami, I miss stream time. <laughs> Like I like I'm I missed the twelve o'clock call, <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I missed I missed stream, <laughs> you know, I've never missed stream before. I have taken days out, but I've never like purposely missed stream. You know what I mean? Pur I see purposely, like 
accidentally like miss stream time. I've never done that. And you know, I'm not, I'm not looking to start. <laughs> yeah, I am mucho dead. Today's Saturday? I feel like everything's like flowing in at once. I'm just like, today's Saturday. Uh, people are here. <laughs> I got to talk. I, how, how good. So many things are happening. Um, yeah. Well, we're playing Phoenix right today, which is fun. Uh, I don't know how fun it is going to be for me, though. I love Phoenix, right? I love puzzles. I love Professor Layton. You know, I, I, I live for this stuff, but like. My throat is gonna, my throat's gonna hate me by the end of it. It's okay. I'll, I'll figure something out. <clears throat> you know, I've been at a very stagnant, like, 65 subscribers recently, which I'm fine with that. It's very, I, I like, I like that number quite a bit, right? <laughs> but someone else subscribed and I was like, huh. Who's subscribing? Who who is this person? How did you find me? Here's here's the thing, right? When it comes to like, I don't know, I don't know if, if like y'all understand this, right? But like, discoverability on YouTube, it kind it kind of heavily favors like video formats, <laughs> or not even like discoverability more than it's just like what people prefer to watch. <laughs> people prefer to watch like pre-edited like videos compared to like. Like, like three, three to four hour live streams. It, that's just kind of how it's always been, right? So, the thought of me fucking like getting more people to subscribe is kind of like, what, <laughs> why, <laughs> or like now? I mean, is that what that was? Was that you? <laughs> was that you, son? Me? Okay, well that's fine then. I understand that. Really? <laughs> that probably, that probably, thank you, by the way. I appreciate it. Hold up. A clown. I can't believe it. He's doing this right now. I thought he was going to do this later, honestly. Looks like we'll have two streams going on. I usually try to catch those streams, but I guess I'm not catching them today. If you don't know, Mr. Broti Oni is actually streaming right now. <laughs> Broti Oni is one of the boys. He's actually the bo one of the boys in the video. And uh, something unfortunate happened yesterday, I think. So he had to move stream to today. I was going to try to catch it because it was today, but I thought he was going to do it at 4 and not 12, the time that I start. <laughs> Great. Okay, it, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. We we both have our jobs to do. But yeah, um, I, these games, here's the thing, guys. These, these 3DS games, they're taking so much longer than I thought they would. Well, I, well, like Phoenix, right? I kind of expected... Because I'm like, ooh, Phoenix Wright. Like, story. Like, we're going to have to go through, like, probably, like, 50 to 60 hours worth of just, like, cutscenes. <laughs> you know, and, like, dialogue stuff. You know? But Fire Emblem, man. We are 50 hours into that game, and we're only into the fourth act. We're, I think we're in the second. We're only just in the second half of the game. So that's fun. I'm I'm looking to finish that as soon as possible. <laughs> really. Here's the thing. Uh there there are some games that I want to play that that I bought during this the spring steal, but I won't be able to play them until I finish Phoenix Wright. <laughs> I guess that's a good transition into hey, let's go into the game. Transition. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh yeah, I did it. Oh, you did it. 
Oh, you done it now. Yeah. It did the thing. Okay, let me just uh turn this turn this off. That's the wrong game. That's the wrong game. Whoops. I accidentally put in the wrong cartridge. Just <laughs> give me a second. <laughs> Imagine that, putting in the wrong cartridge <laughs> for the wrong game. <laughs> Guys, I, I would never. All right. <laughs> that's so, that's actually so funny. <clears throat> Guys, I don't know, my, my 3DS is acting up today. <laughs> Welcome to Phoenix Wright, Professor Leighton. It's actually been a while since we played. Which one is the most recent one? This one, probably. I can't tell. They all have 1558. <laughs> we managed to cross the, the guard post and make our way through the, the garrison before meeting the, the storyteller. Mr. Wright and Maya should be meeting with Espella at this very moment. I wonder if they were able to find out any more information about Bazella. Right. So last time we were playing, we were... She... <clears throat> last time we were playing, uh, Espella told us about Bazella, or she told us something. Oh! She told us... That she was the... 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 the, the guy's daughter or something. Right? Cool. Uh, what are we doing here? <clears throat> we will now start transitioning into voice acting 101. <laughs> that's what, because that's what these streams usually are. It's just us, me talking, voice acting. <clears throat> Here's the thing about that, right? Okay, wait, hold up. <laughs> woof, 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 woof. Starting off strong today. Wait a minute. That aggressive bark. Please tell me that isn't. <laughs> woof, woof. Aha! It's Constantine. He looks happy to see us. Wish I could say the feeling was mutual. Once bitten, twice shy. That pretty much sums, up, sums me up right now. Really? I don't know. I think he's looking much friendlier today, as if you ask me. See? Come on, Nick. Pet him just once. Grrrr. Ah! This one really, really hates me. Well, well. If it isn't Sir Blue Knight. Exactly what are you doing over there on all fours? Oh, Inquisitor Barnum. Uh, glad to see you again. Actually, there's something we'd like to ask you ask you about. Uh, come on, Nick. Stand up already. Uh I'd like to meet that mutt's owner face to face. Phew. <laughs> How foolish. Constantine happens to be mine. And a true knight's companion he is. He needn't waste time seeking his teeth into the likes of you. Uh, I had a hunch. So Constantine really is your dog, huh? Gotta admire the nerve of this guy. He just sits back and lets his dog bite people. Uh, I mean me. Never mind that. What is it you want to talk about? Just make it quick, Sir Blue Knight. So, you Inquisitors are the ones who investigate incidents of magic in this town. Woof woof! Woo woo! Yeah, there's a dog. <clears throat> so, you Inquisitors are the ones who investigate incidents of murder- murder? Magic in this town, aren't you? Yes, of course. If you don't mind, we'd like to ask you about that unsolved incident with magic. There's one thing you must never forget. The Knights of the Inquisition excel at their work. Uh, right. All incidents of magic perpetrated by the witches are dealt with by the Inquisitors. 
without exception. <clears throat> Spoken with a, that usual calm and collected air of confidence. That's interesting. You see, we heard different. Apparently, there's one particular incident that remains unsolved. Hmm. And something about an alchemist being murdered? Ring any bells? What? Who did you get that information from? We, uh, well, High Inquisitor Darklaw. Yeah, your boss told us. Fucker. Now tell us. <laughs> Please? <laughs> Why the blaze didn't you say so? You could have saved us some time. Huh? How's it my fault? The High Inquisitor has put me on the spot by leaking such information to the likes of you. Well, I suppose that leaves nothing for it. I shall tell you the whole story, since I do not believe in things by halves. Well, please, go ahead. I'm all ears. We're all ears. It was three months ago that an alchemist living in near, near the town square was murdered. Sorry, Inquisitor Barnum, um, but I'm kind of lost already. Is there any difference between alchemy and magic? When it comes to something that difficult, it will not do good asking me. Huh? It seems that while townspeople respected him, they also treated him with caution. They respected they respected him. Hello. <laughs> that's what this that's what this guy looks like. That's what his voice looks sounds like in my head. He used his skills to make medical concoctions and acted like much like a physician. The efficacy of his cues was almost like magic. That's the that's the word, right? <laughs> Wait, hold up guys, give me a second. Uh okay. I just gotta check something. <clears throat> he was famous within his neighborhood, in fact. He was sometimes referred to as Dr. Bell Duke by the townspeople. Is this the murder we're going to solve next? <laughs> At any rate, it's safe to say that Mr. Sir, the, that Sir Bell Duke was no witch. How can you say for sure? That's simple. Sir Bell Duke was a man. Men can't be witches? Well, can't really argue with that. Well, can we? <laughs> hey, don't limit your sights. <laughs> you never know what'll happen. Sir Beldu came to a mysterious end three months ago. A mysterious end? There were two things about his death that cannot be explained rationally. Firstly, the murder scene. His body was discovered at his residence. God damn it. No! <laughs> God damn gender lock classes! His body was discovered in his residence, in the study. His room was locked. There's no other conceivable way the crime could have been committed. Except by witchcraft. Isn't that what people call a locked room mystery? Hmm? A what? Oh, uh, it's nothing, really. So, what what was the other mysterious thing? Mysterious thing. Blah, blah, blah. Come on, dog. It's like that fucking scene in Overlord where uh what was her name? Tri she tried to ride the tricorn? But she couldn't write it. Be oh, whoops. She couldn't write it because she was a virgin. Like, it's so stupid. How do they know that? <laughs> it's dumb. They only added that just to give... <laughs> just to give characters. If I want to write a Pegasus Knight and be one, I will. <laughs> Secondly, until then, all incidents involving witches have been foretold in the story. It's a bicorn? Oh. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> tricorn sounds right. <laughs> Haven't you ever ridden a tricorn, boy? Tricorns exist. Because they're, they're the opposite of unicorns? Who said one is the opposite of two? The opposite of one is none. <laughs> Negative one. They just take a chunk out of your head. <laughs> Foretold in the story. In other words, predicted by the storyteller. However, the murder of Sir Belduc did not appear in the story. 
Such a thing has never occurred before. So not only was this the only incident, the only unsolved incident in Labyrinthia's history, but it, but it was also the only incident to not be predicted by the storyteller. I mean, opposite of their preferred writers, and they're evil. Wait, so Pegasus? Wait, so Pegasus, Pegasi, can only be written by, by non-virgins? Fuck. <laughs> Shit! God damn it! What? No! <laughs> Fuck, I gotta find someone soon. <laughs> no unicorns? Ah. Oh, the unicorns are fine then. Unicorns are whatever. They're like unicorns, but they're not mythological. You certainly are an interesting one, Sir Blue Knight. Huh? You really think you could solve this incident alone? When the Knights of Inqu when the Knights of the Inquisition have been working working on it for three months? I must say, that is some confidence. You won't know unless we try. You may risk becoming a target of some terrifying witch's vengeance. I don't want that. I'm hoping that was a joke. Well, I suppose you may you may as well take a look. Who knows? You may even find something. Sir Belduc's residence is just beyond the town square. Ask anyone around there, and they'll point you in the right direction. Oh, thank you, Inquisitor Barnum. Sir Blue Knight, I believe our courtroom battles are far from over. Until we meet again in court. I'll see you then, Inquisitor. Why is he just standing there? Wolf, 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 wolf. Grr, wolf, wolf. Maya, can we please get this mutt away from me? I can't feel my leg. Aw, so soon? I was hoping he'd use you as a blue chew toy just one more time. You got a puzzle for me? Sir Balduk's resident has already been scoured by the Knights of Inquisition. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I, um... I, uh... Constantine accidentally peed on me. <clears throat> I believe you'll... You'll only be wasting your time if you, if you go there now. Uh, there's nothing, there's nothing here that we can do, so we, we can just leave. He's so cute. He fucking bites me. I don't like him. <clears throat> the next time we pass through this door, we'll have the decisive evidence. I'm just trying to make sure that there's no puzzles. <laughs> this, this is what we're gonna do for a lot of this. Find a lot of puzzles. Like, is there anybody here? No. If the puzzle is hidden, they'll tell us if the puzzle is hidden, but... Puzzles usually only come from people that, that are, like, actually on the screen. Like, is there someone here? You? Random girl? Milk! There really is no one. Oh, lady. <laughs> Would you two folks be interested in a rumor? Huh? A rumor? What kind of rumor? <laughs> that young lady is a silly question. It's not for me to choose the rumor. You two folks have to guess what it is. We have to guess it. You mean if we roll... You mean if we roll off a few yes or no questions, you'll answer th them for us? Do you think you could tell us about the alchemist? Alright, but no need to rush. First, tell me what vegetable you, you folks get. 
See what vegetables we get. Or, that's the wrong voice. See what vegetables we get. What do you mean? Take a look at this. One, two. One, two. What's today's vegetable, I wonder? <laughs> that would be a wee little pumpkin. This little fella's small, even for a pint-sized pumpkin. Oh, right. Now, as for the alchemist, he was an outstanding handsome man. And that smile of his, why, it worked wonders on all the women folk, all right? Better than any medicine or so, they say. Worth a treat for me, too. That smile always would always ease my nerve pains. What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, that's it? Well, it was a very small pumpkin. That's all for today, I'm afraid. So you're saying the alchemist's remedies weren't so effective? I don't think that's quite what she meant. I thought she had a puzzle. Last time we came here, she had a puzzle for us. She had a whole, like, radish thing with, like, sheep. <laughs> or was it? Or it was just the animals? I don't remember. Puzzle. Nope. Oh, it's you. Where's your brother? <laughs> What's the matter? Are you lost or something? Of course not! <laughs> How could I be lost? You listen to me. Have you two seen my young boy about the same age as me? Um, nope. I can't say we have. What's up? Did you get split up? Nuh uh. We, have, we haven't been s separated. More like he ran, went and ran off somewhere on his own. Oh, I see. Well, if we see him, we'll bring him back here to you. That's right. He's probably a little worried. He's probably a little worried as well. Who said I? Who said I was worried? Just that, you know, Cecil. He's such a little weakling crybaby. He's probably crying his eyes out somewhere right now. That whip can't do anything without me by his side. When he feels sick. He can't even go for medicine without me. So... I get it. It's only natural that you're worried about him. You said his name is Cecil, right? Don't worry, we're on it. If you see a cry, a crybaby fitting in that description, we'll give you a shout. Okay. You don't have a puzzle either. Where are all the puzzles? Hey, just because we're Maya and Phoenix doesn't mean we, we don't have any puzzles. Wait. Nice. <laughs> oh, we're actually not allowed in the, um, in the room. <clears throat> hey, uh, what voice did I give you? I don't remember. Hi, you two. Oh, did you want to speak to us? Need I have, oh wait, I think I remember now. Need I have the word with both of you. Thanks to your turning courtroom procedure upside- Thanks to your turning courtroom procedure upside down- What the fuck? We're in a fine mess now! Finding a defendant innocent in it is unprecedented in the world of witch's court! What do you mean? I'm pretty sure trying- Trying innocent people is a more- Is more of a problem than your previous procedure. Oh, than your precious procedure. I can't read right now. What are you trying to say? That girl! is being held on suspicion of being the Great Witch Bazella. Defending your only invites suspicion onto your own complicity. That's a false accusation. That's right. There's not a shred of evidence against the Spella. Hmm. No matter what you say, she is the most likely suspect. Anyway, if I stand around talking to you for too long, I'll invite suspicion upon myself. So from now on, I would appreciate it if you would keep your distance. But you're the one who approached us. Hmm. Oh, look, it's Book Boy. Puzzle! <laughs> Puzzle! <laughs> Ooh, this makes me so mad. What's the problem? It's my neighbor. He got, he got his really annoying habit. 
annoying habit. He just loves stomping around his place all the time. Thanks to him, all my books in the house have now become a complete mess. Not to mention, I can't get any sleep! That does sound like a serious problem. Can you even imagine how loud it is? Um, well, I, uh, not exactly. That's what I thought. I knew you couldn't. So just let me reproduce it for you. You'll truly be amazed. What the fuck? What do you re the stomping or the books? <laughs> Stomp on it. Uh, 40. Wow, that's a lot. The house's floorboards are in a complete disarray. Much to the displeasure of his owner. He has decided to stomp out the problem himself. Literally. Each time he stomps on a tile, the stomp tile sur surrounding the tiles will be flipped over. That's the... the t what the fuck? Each time he stomps on a tile, the stomp tile and the surrounding tiles will be flipped over. The tiles sectioned off by dividers will not be flipped by near by stomps. Stomp and arrange all the tiles. Ah. Okay. 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 How do I do this? <laughs> I can jump over walls. If I'm being honest, I'm kind of going blind here. <laughs> I don't I don't know what I'm doing. This is <laughs> Fuck, that's actually so close. Or is it? Wait. I can't jump diagonally. <laughs> I wish I could. It's so close. I can feel it in my bones. Fuck, I fucked it up, actually. No, damn it. <laughs> How do I do this? <laughs> How do I do this? Um, um, this, this, no, wait, that's actually so close. <laughs> Fuck, oh shit. <laughs> but this is good shit. I don't like this puzzle. This puzzle makes me mad. I don't... Do I have to jump over the wall? I don't want to. I don't want to jump over the wall. I don't want to... Puzzle is kind of fun. Ah, shit. Ah, fun. Oh, we're back to this situation. <laughs> God damn it. No, damn it. It's so close, dog. It's <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> Wait. 
Genius! <laughs> the answer here is obvious. Puzzle solved. Take that! Yay! <laughs> so what do you think of that? Wasn't that stomping just ridiculous? I've already had enough. Then why don't you just pack your things and move out? Move out? Move out? Hey, that's a great idea. I'll come and stay in the library instead. I can be more of a help to Ms. Mystery, and I'd be surrounded by all these books. This is the greatest idea ever. No, Dewey. I'm sorry, but I must insist that you leave and go home. Well, Maya, let's just pretend nothing ever happened and let's get going ourselves. Hmm. Sometimes life doesn't go quite the way you want it to, huh? Hi, Miss Mystery. I know you. You're both acquaintances of the professor, aren't you? I was at the trial last night. I saw the whole thing. Oh, you were too. You were there too? I guess the witch trial really does get the town folk inter interested. Indeed, especially last night, on account of the defendant being a spell like Cantabella. But I must admit, you amazed me. Uh, I did? Very much. It was the first time I had ever seen a defender fight in that way for his client. For example, the way you used the word contradiction in the courtroom. It worked almost like magic. But that's only natural for a defense attorney. Until now, defenders were always defeated the moment they stood before Inquisitor Barnum. Not only that, but in this town, there's no one who wants to bewitch a friend a witch. Fuck. The, that's just the, the what is Wolf Voice? The, the, that's just not how a trial should be. It's not justice. I believe Professor Main. What the fuck am I saying, dog? I believe Professor Lane made the right decision giving you the Grand Grimoire. And from now on, I hope you will continue to fight for justice in court. Alright, you got it. Now then, this conversation has become really rather heavy, don't you think? If it's okay with you, I have something to lighten the mood. Oh? Then that must mean... I have a repository of, of all the puzzles in Labyrinthia. If you come, if you come to me... If you come to me, you can tackle any puzzles that you may have missed. As well as puzzles that you previously couldn't solve. Why not occasionally try a puzzle or two to keep your thinking flexible? I think I've done all these already. Yep. I'll be here anytime. If you need if, if you feel the need to solve a puzzle or two. I'm always in the mood to solve a puzzle. Alright? Miss Riddell, don't don't get me wrong. Always in a puzzle solving mood. That's where we need to go? Well, uh, we're gonna go here instead. Oh, Cecile! What's up? Cecil! Hey, Nick! That kid, he must be... Hey, you're right! He must be the one that little girl is searching for. Okay, let's talk to him then. Hey there, Cecile! Cecil? Fuck. Who are you? A moment ago, we met a little girl who asked us to help her find her missing crybaby. You're Cecil, right? My, my sister Petal said that. That's right. She's been worried about you. P Petal always tells me not to talk to strangers. What? I mean, you, you might just grab me and take me off somewhere. You might be even a witch. What? <laughs> Well, in that case, there's nothing we can do. See you around, kid. Oh, come on! Nick, we promised his sister! Listen, if I'm going to be suspected of being a witch's accomplice, I'd rather just hand this kid over to one of the patrolling knights. Um, okay, okay, please, could you solve this puzzle for me? Huh? If you're the kind, if you're the kind of people who could solve puzzles, I'll believe you. Why? This this town runs on puzzles. Oh fuck. Train trouble. 
The little girl's favorite block train set has ended up crashing and breaking apart into pieces. Luckily, the pieces of each individual carriage managed to stay separate. So carefully examine the pieces, the pieces on the upper screen and carefully and choose the correctly assembled carriage from letters A to E. Okay. Okay, this this okay, this is this is interesting. Uh let's see. I think the first like big identifying thing is like the cylinders, right? Their wheels are are the biggest biggest like oh shit. There's only one cart with two big wheels. And the one with two big wheels is, is E. E is two big wheels. Alright. So then uh th there's two small wheels, and then there's a big wheel and a small wheel. So yeah, so it's like this. And now we have to figure out um Um, it's interesting. How do we figure this out? Okay, um... Ah, oh, fuck. You can't see it. I can't see it. How, uh... So... This has... This one only has one triangle. From what we can see, this one has two. And I was gonna be like, okay, which one has two triangles? They both have one triangle. Unless unless there's a triangle hiding somewhere so we can't tell from that so now I'm trying to think of how else to solve this uh let's look at these two then uh this one has one triangle this has two triangles this there's a triangle right there so this is D this is C what are these how do we figure out? One of them has a small plate. Uh, this one doesn't have like a thin plate. This one does at the front right there. I think it's this. Uh, yeah, I think it's that. I think that's it, right? Maya the Magnificent strikes again. Easy. All in a day's work for Maya Fey, Ace Assistant. Her voice, that that being her voice is so is so like, oh, that's her voice. <laughs> I like every time I hear it, I'm just like, wow. <laughs> Th that's great. You two aren't strangers after all. Yeah, of course we're not. I mean, do you think we're, do you think I look like some stranger? Well, you don't look strange yourself. But those clothes you wear sure are weird. Yeah. Nick, I think we should go. Maya, we can't give up now. After all, we just solved the puzzle. Okay, name one thing that's strange about my clothes. One. I could give you a laundry list of things. <laughs> anyway, we'll go and get your sister. You just wait here for a while, okay? Okay. Oh, it's a sail. Cecil, fuck. Why'd you let go of my hand and run off? I I'm sorry, sis. I just... At least we're back together now, right? <laughs> so what? I could care less one way or the other. But anyway, from now on, don't you go running off like that, got it? Got it, sis. There you go. Problem solved. It feels good helping people out like this. Even so, that was a tough puzzle. I was wondering if we ever actually solve it for a second there. Yeah. But we so have to take... We, we so ha have what it takes. What the fuck? We so have what it takes, Nick. I could see us going pro in this whole puzzle-solving thing, just like the professor. If we get stuck on a case, we could always consider changing jobs. I'll think about it. That's good. These two are, these two are fine now. Hey, thanks for what you did. No problem. You guys stick together now, you hear? Right. I'll hold Petal's hand extra tight just to be sure she doesn't go running off anywhere. That damn. Hey! 
You're the one who went missing. <laughs> she hit me. You two should try and stop arguing. Yay! Nice. We're still not even an hour into stream. That's that's crazy to me. <laughs> Shit. Well, we reached the square, but I wonder where the alchemist's residence is. Hey Nick, look over there. There's a street leading leading away from the square. Hey, you're right. Let's go take a look. Oh yo, it's it's Lazy Boy. He's got a puzzle. Hey, I thought you two were working at the bakery. Are you goofing off? Well, not exactly. Actually, we thought we'd give up baking and try our hands at something else. Is that so? Sounds like a good idea. Your bread did taste a little unusual anyway. What? You mean our bread wasn't delicious? That's strange. I mean, we used so much butter and kneaded the dough so hard. Just my opinion. I prefer my bread a little more fluffy and light. Oh, really? So, uh, just how fluffy and light are we talking here? Well, maybe as fluffy and light as in a, this puzzle. What the fuck? How do you compare it to a puzzle? What's this? It's a maze? Cloud Maze 2. Navigate Maya through the clouds and help find Phoenix. Jumping through holes in the clouds will drop Maya down a level. Likewise, jumping on a fluffy cloud will center. Oh, yeah, I know. Alright, let's go. Oh, oops. Uh, so what holes can we take? Oh. Uh, whoopsies. Oh, we have to take that one. That one, the, the one all the way at the end of that corridor is being blocked by the other hole, so we have... So we have to do this. Yep. Jump down the hole. Whee! Hey. Hey. Oh, got nowhere else to go, actually. Whee! Nice. Yeah, nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, uh, which hole? Or which one? I don't know. Well, try on a... We, uh, we're trying to get... Go, we're trying to go over there, right? Yeah? Wait, did I do it? Is this it? This might be it. I mean, shoot. If it'll take us there. I mean, I'll... I'll take what I can get. Phoenix! Oh, damn. What is this? Oh. Take that one. <laughs> take take that one. This one's the good one. I will listen to him, and I'll take the good one. Wee! Gosh dang. We're just flying. Oh, don't jump down there. <laughs> I didn't remember where, where we were. <laughs> that was really close. If I held it down for one for like another second, I we would have fucked up. Phoenix! Phoenix! Yay, Phoenix! Maya the Magnificent Me, Phoenix. strikes again. Phoenix! Yay. Check it out, Nick. Great, that was a quite that was quite the dizzying experience. Yeah, it was. Wow, impressive work. I really didn't expect you to solve that. Actually, I thought the same thing too. Well, 
I knew I could do it. So what a so what were you out of work bakers doing hanging around here anyway? We're investigating an incident involving the alchemist. Do you know anything about it? Surely the Knights of Inquisitions are the one to ask. They could tell you a lot more than I can. What are you what the fuck are you saying? How come every time you type in my chat, it's always something that's just not right? <laughs> Both morally and just generally. <laughs> the title's right there! It, it's there! <laughs> it, it's right there! <laughs> Look at it! Do I gotta point it? I don't have thumbs! Look at my nub hands, dog! You're being wrong and ableist! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Barney. You gotta... <laughs> you gotta... <laughs> Come on, man. I expect so much more from you. <laughs> Just... Come on. <laughs> What's up? Phoenix Wright. <laughs> That's what we're playing. Oh, uh, where was I? They could tell you a lot more than I can. You might be right about that. Even so, it's a right shame someone like him could get murdered. Oh, are you on break right now? Good luck with work, yo. Don't get overstressed. Hey, you didn't play Monopoly today. I didn't. I didn't play it before I fell asleep. I usually play it as soon as it resets, but I, I, uh, I didn't. <laughs> I was trying to fall asleep for today. <laughs> I'll do that. I'll do that in a bit. Yes. Encourage the community. Yes. Be nice to each other. That's that's the community I want. I want to harbor. Every everyone be nice, except for the people who. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> It was mean. It was mean of me. I often went to him myself to get medicine. He was always friendly and understanding. Oh, I like your moderators. Good. Yes, like my moderators. You hear that, boys? Botany likes you. <clears throat> I was gonna say we're all friends here, but like, I'm a streamer. So, like, parasocialism, you know? <laughs> I got- do I- do I have to draw this line here? Do I have to draw this line here? While- while I'm very- I try to be very friendly with my- my viewers, right? Hey. We can't- we're not friends. <laughs> unless- unless, like, I hang out with you, like, outside of stream. You know what I mean? <laughs> Parasocialism, baby. Gotta, gotta practice that. <laughs> I'm a friend? Yes. Yes, you're a friend. <laughs> Orphan. <laughs> Orphan drop by stream. Are you guys all... Wait, hold up. Don't tell me you guys are all in there. Yeah, look at that. Yep. You guys are all chilling. <laughs> okay, I was wondering. Okay. Well, you guys do whatever. You guys don't have to watch my stream. <laughs> Come on. Unless you want to watch Phoenix, right? Become a paratrooper. I do, I was I was going to I was going to make a paratrooper noise, but I don't even know what they make. Unless you're talking about an actual paratrooper. I was I'm thinking a paratrooper. <laughs> Okay. Stop distracting me. I we gotta play. He always, he was always friendly and understanding. It seems like Mr. Sir Belduc was a good man, at least from what we've heard. I just hope they can manage to solve this case soon. That's it. A 
That's all you gotta say, dog? The residence of the of the Lake Alchemist feels desolate as people no longer visit. So this is Sir Belduke's residence. It definitely looks like an alchemist's house. Alchemist's house. I've never seen plants like these before. So, what do we do now? Just because the owner's deceased, we can't exactly go barging in. Hmm. But have you noticed just how well kept his yard is? It looks like someone is still living here. Someone has definitely been doing this upkeep around here. That's for sure. Hey, who's that over there? Hello! Before we talk to you, I'm the hint coins. Looking for hint coins. Hint coins? Hint coin. Hint coin. Yeah! Hint coin. There's one, there's one more somewhere. Is it in this plant? Barrels. It's in this bush next to your foot. Okay. You got a puzzle? Fortunately, there are many customers. It's very strange. After all, Easter is coming up, and and the shop won't be open for for the for two days, of course. All right, Easter. Easter is coming up. Uh, my family is actually doing something for Easter. We're. My family isn't isn't Christian, right? But. We're, we're doing something for the kids. Like an egg hunt. I spent last night putting all the eggs in the in the eggs. All the eggs in the eggs. Putting all the toys in the eggs. <laughs> Cause instead of candy apparently they they like toys. You know like it's it sucks. I like I I opened a box full of like small toys and they were all just like I'm just looking at all like the trends. Right? It's just like a bunch of like squishy toys and a bunch of poppets. <laughs> and I'm like, great. Poppets. <laughs> I'm like, what is so good about these? These things are like finicky and they don't they, they don't work. <laughs> it, it's just I mean, I'm like, damn. I wonder how they're gonna grow up. Ah <laughs> oh, fuck. Sorry, came yesterday, and they're so cute. Uh, the uh, pictures on Twitter. Yes, the cats. They're not kittens. They're pretty old. <laughs> they like uh, how old are they? How how old are they approaching? I think they're approaching like six years. Six years old. Six years old. Uh, seven, like five, six, around that age. But yes, thank you. They are my children. Mine is four years old. <laughs> Yours four years old? Cute. Oh right. I think I remember seeing them. I think I think I saw them on Uncheated thing. On Uncheated server. Though I don't remember what they look like. Cute. I love cats. Cats are great. Too bad I'm allergic to them. <laughs> I'm, I think my relationship with animals would be a lot stronger if <laughs> if I wasn't allergic to if I wasn't allergic to them. My previous cat was 19 before she died. Aw. I'm sorry. That is like really old though, isn't it? 19 is a pretty long time for cat. I'm I bet she lived a happy life. Yeah, the thing about that stuff is is super like uh <laughs> cats. <laughs> Yeah, 19 is a very long time, though. It is... That's good. Uh... Fuck, I'm trying to think. <laughs> I don't think we've ever had, like, a pet... That's lived up to, like, their age. Like... I don't think we've had a... I don't, I don't think my family has ever had a pet that's lived to old age. <laughs> I, there's always been some incident that happened 
as morbid as that sounds, <laughs> there's always been like an incident where like where like there was some freak accident <laughs> and like they just poof they they're gone. <laughs> Oh no, we did have one. We we had one dog. We had one dog. I remember his name. His name was Doug. Wow, I haven't thought about Doug in so long. Yeah, he lived for a while. I think Doug lived for like ten years and then and then he, he passed away, unfortunately. And then there was another dog that our family had, but I didn't really know her that well. Because she was in she was in a family. She was inside of the family that I didn't really like visit a lot. Yeah, her name was Storm. Or, no no no. Was her name Storm or was it Chief? No no no. Storm. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, she she passed away. I had no idea when when she did. Because like I, I couldn't I didn't keep up. But like I had but I, when I found out, I was like, oh shit, really? I had met her a few times when she was younger. And in turn, I was younger, right? And I only heard recently that, that she had passed away. So it was like, it was like, no, oh god. And those passing away is always really sad. It really is. I need to go back. Bye bye. Okay. Have fun at work, yo, Badani. I'm sure you you are since there's no customers. <laughs> it's just you chilling. But yeah, have fun. Okay, time to get back to the game. No more no more sad animal stories. Those those stories don't get me sad because I wasn't particularly close to any of them. Have fun, thank you. I wasn't particularly close to any of those animals. I just knew they existed, and I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> okay. What voice do I give this person? There's huge they them vibes going on right now. <laughs> uh my sincerest apologies. I'm afraid medicants are no longer being provided here. Huh? Did you not come here for medicants of of some kind? Um no, we we didn't come here for that. We're here to investigate the incident, the one involving Sir Belduke. Forgive me if I'm mistaken, but you do not look like members of the Knights of the Inquisition. I'm Phoenix Wright, an attorney at law. And you? Uh, I'm guessing you live here? Indeed. My name is Jean Greyer. I was a butler here to the late Master Belduke. Uh, butler. Hmm. Hmm. Sir Belduc. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll deepen it a bit. Wow, a butler. This must be the first time meeting one, a real one. Well, Mr. Grail, if you don't mind. I've been told that the incident involving your master has been shrouded in mystery. It has it got something to do with the Great Witch Bazella? We're trying to investigate that at the moment. The Great Witch Bazella. I... Am I right in supposing that you are defending Espella Cantabella? Well, actually, yes, we are. So you know Espella, don't you? That Bob is FYE. What does that mean? What does that mean? Slang? Is this your TikTok slang? Don't know it. That goes without saying. Everyone around here knows her. Do you think you can help us? We're looking for leads. She, what? He's gonna say no? I was gonna say she. He's gonna say no, huh? While he was alive, Master taught me the value in investigating the truth that governs the natural world. If you, too, are investigating the truth, then it would be against my teachings for me not to cooperate with you. Would you both like to come in? We can discuss the matter further inside. That'd be great. Thank you, Mr. Guerrero. Whoa. Spoken like a true butler. He's a pretty cool guy, isn't he, Nick? What is this room? 
And this is the room that, Miss, that Master Bell Duke kindly provided as my accommodation. So, uh, is this the room where the incident took place? That would be the Master's study. It is the room right next door. However... It's a TikTok thing. Don't act like it's not. <laughs> I like how you describe the, the the first way you describe it is <laughs> the first way you just describe a bob is it's bobbing. <laughs> yo, that bob is bobbing. Fucking yo, it's bobbing so hard. <laughs> you like it gives you no context of what that means. <laughs> I understand. Yo, if the youngsters use it, and if it's slang nowadays used on the internet, it's a TikTok thing. That's my definition of TikTok. Internet slang popularized through TikTok. It doesn't have to originate from it. However, the state of the room has been carefully preserved since the incident three months ago. Such as, as such, entry into the room is, is currently not permitted. Really? Bummer. Is that by order of the Knights of the Inquisition by chance? Yes. And as I've lived with Master since an early age, they also decided that it would only be fitting for me to stay on and keep the place in order. So you've been looking after the place ever since Monsieur Balduc passed away? Yes, that's correct. Now then, is there anything further you'd like to- you wish to discuss? Hint coins! Hint coins! Where are your hint coins? Yeah, I assume this is- this is- yeah, this is- this, 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 Well, I can't fucking speak. This is the murder we're gonna be investigating next, I assume? Looking for candle. Ah, I was gonna say when there's a candle, there's usually a hint coin on it, but it w there wasn't any this time. Okay, I just I just need to check. We found all of them. If you stay in here, then where's your bed, Mr. Gray Earl? As I mentioned a moment ago, I know very little about the ma this matter. As a matter of fact, it might be better to ask the, Inquis the Inquisitors. I can tell you about one thing though, namely what occurred before the incident. Before the incident? Yes. It was three months ago, around the time that Mr. Bell Duke was murdered. We were on our way back from collecting specimens for research. That's- And it was already into the small hours of the morning. That- that- that's a voice. <laughs> I'll, I'll reference it. There was a thunderstorm on the way, and as the storm drew nearer, we quickly made our way home. Bing, 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 bing. Boom, boom, boom. Lightning. Ooh, thunder. Oh, shit. What is happening? Shit! Oh, fuck! Anyone would have been surprised at what we saw. But Master Belduke, well, how can I put this? He reacted in a most peculiar way. Unlike others who saw it, he seemed unsettled, as if he was truly afraid of something. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, this bell tower just appeared out of nowhere. After north. that bell tower appeared, he changed completely. Mm -hmm. Master Belduke became a different man well, wait a second did you just say a bell tower appeared hey that explains it that must be what high inquisitor darklaw meant when she she mentioned an incident involving a bell tower to this day 
I did not know what the master was so afraid of. Do you think it was connected in some way to his death? I think it must have been magic. I mean, for a bell tower to just appear like that. Hmm. Mr. Grayo, do you mind if we take a look around? I know that the Inquisitors have already carried out the full investigation, but... There might just be a clue or two that... With some connection to the Great Witch. Well, I suppose. Providing I'm allowed to accompany you, of course. There is a sense there is sensitive equipment everywhere, and it's my responsibility to take care of it. I understand. We'll be careful. I wonder how the professor and Luke are doing in their visit to the storyteller. Yeah. I've been wondering about that too. A chance to meet Labyrinthia's creator. Let's just say they they don't let's just hope they don't upset the guy and and have some terrible plot twist to get written against them. That only happened if you visited the storyteller, Nick. The professor would never let anything like that happen. I've got a feeling they'll come up, they'll come back with some pretty useful leads. We have to do our best too, Nick. Let's keep our side of let's keep up our side of the investigation. You got it, Maya. We're all in, we're all in this together. Come on. Let's see what we can find. That's the spirit. Okay, I'm like, there's no way we just we just do this without transitioning. Nice. Nice. <clears throat> Bell Tower and the Alchemist. According to Grey Earl, Sir Belduc's butler, the bell tower appeared mysteriously after a lightning strike one evening. For some reason, Sir Balduc became seriously agitated upon its appearance. The bell tower in the, in the town square is under continuous guard. Could it be related in some way to the death of the alchemist? Oh, fuck. Layton's voice is so deep. Ah, oh, shit, it's Luke! <laughs> the great witch Bazella. Will be tied and will be tried in court. Fuck! What what voice did I give you? <clears throat> that will be <laughs> that will be a Labyrinthia's final trial, a fitting end for the town ruled by, by riches and their magic. <laughs> I can't give all the big mature guys the same voice. Am I to believe that this final chapter has already begun? That is correct. And there is no way that you can possibly change its final outcome. Hmm. I wonder about that. You see, I gave my world to my world. I gave my word to a young lady. I promise that without fail, I would be able to rescue her. If I'm not mistaken, the Great Witch Trial is to begin in two weeks' time, the same day that on which you will hold your next parade. I believe that should give us sufficient time to show you what we can do. Such a smug countenance. I find it intolerable. I beg your pardon? Two weeks from now, you say? I'm afraid that information is out of date, Herschel Leighton. Out of date? What do you mean? My parade will, ha will be held the day after tomorrow, according to the amended story. Wh what? The day after tomorrow? That's not fair. Now that's the kind of countenance I, I want from the characters in my story. Wh wh what? That's what I. That's what I do, didn't you know? Fuck, you know what I want to do? I want to do like a doofenshmirtz. I can't do doofenshmirtz though. I decided... <laughs> I decided that the fate of the, the characters who have no knowledge of the future... It would appear that you have not fully... You are not fully aware of the, gra the gravity of the situation. Let me see now. Just for fun, I'll write you a little story. A story full of surprises and a few tears. I shall enjoy seeing the emotions of the characters as they play their parts. A story for us. Stories are a fixture of this town. You would be 
you'd be wise not to embrace to embrace them. Let's see. I think we will need a stimulating incident. We should have a witch, some witchcraft, and perhaps a little death. Death? You can. Oh, but I can. Let me see. This is a golden opportunity to use the alchemist residence. How about this? Your comrade will meet with death by golden curse in the alchemist residence. Hmm. This could be a truly interesting story. No way. Feel free to act as you wish when playing your role in this story. How can you... The beginning of a new tragedy, or farce. The victim of a golden curse lies within the dwelling of a user of false alchemy. A man from far away falls to a golden curse and a woman from afar cries out in grief. Uh, what a, let me say. The woman is captured. Her dark trial begins. The fiery pit will cleanse her of all her sins. Really? This is what we're doing? Phoenix is gonna get turned to gold. Maya's gonna get put on trial again. <laughs> And Leighton and, and Luke are just gonna be here like, well, can't do anything about the story. We just gotta, we just gotta help Maya. <laughs> a man from far away, from afar, falls to a golden curse, and a woman from afar cries on grief. Th this must be referring to Maya and Mr. Wright. If we don't do something, Mr. Ryan and Miss Faye will be in danger. There's no time to lose, Luke. Let's go and find them. We'll write you up, Professor. Hmm. The story has already been written. And no matter what you do, you will not change the result. I do not agree. What do we... What we do next can change the future in any number of ways. I'm sure that's what you want to believe. In fact, a naive outburst like that could be a poignant plot point. Please, be my guest. Your words may help to raise the tension and bring a little excitement to my story. You, you monster. Luke, now is not the time. We need to help Mr. Ryan Maya. Okay, let's go, Professor. We better hurry. <laughs> I like the voice I gave him. Hmm? Professor? Do you hear a flapping sound coming this way? The sound of a large bird, perhaps. Flop, flop, flop! Oh, it's um, Dark Walls bird. Ah, that's the owl that we saw in the audience room. It's holding a letter in its mouth. Not to mention, watching us intently. Perhaps he wants to tell us something. I'll try talking to him to see what he wants. I'm sorry. <laughs> what can we do for you? I've got it, Professor. Who? That's the owl. Says the letter was delivered to the storyteller three months ago. The storyteller? If that's so, then we can't very well keep it. After all, it's wrong to read, read letters addressed to someone else. And that's what the owl said. But he also said there's absolutely nothing written on the sheets in, of the parchment inside the, the envelope. Look, Professor. See? They're totally blank. A letter with nothing written on it. <laughs> with nothing written on it. That is, indeed, most curious. And another thing, Professor. The owl says that this letter has been sent by the, the alchemist. What's that, my boy? Written by the alchemist. 
Do you remember what the storyteller wrote in that story he penned a moment ago? The victim of a golden curse lies in a dwelling of a user of false alchemy, which probably means the place at which the incident will occur is the home of the one who sent this letter. In other words, at the alchemist's house, right, Professor? It's, it appears the address of the sender, Sir Belduc, is written on the envelope, which means we'd better make our way there immediately. Thanks, Mr. Hoot. Bye-bye. <laughs> The address of the envelope is somewhere near the town square. It's a little far from here, Professor. We might not make it in time. I think we'd better run. Luke, my boy, we have the need to rent the steed. I think you're right, Professor. That'll be far quicker than running. Oh, shit. Quickly, Luke. There's no time to lose. Hey, easy, boy. This horse is certainly spirited. Wow, he's turning southern. <laughs> Luke is turning southern. <laughs> At the moment he rides a horse is fucking south. So I love the south. <laughs> Say, Nick, have you noticed how the color of the wall is different from all the other walls in the room? I think I've uh, I've investigated enough crime scenes to know but by now to notice something as obvious as that, Maya. I'm embarrassed to admit it. But actually, there was a small fire here a while, a while ago. It was my fault. The wall ended up a bit singed in the process. Now that you mention it, there are some signs of a fire on the floor there. There too. That is correct. Anyway, I decided to paint the wall myself. Looks like Mis Mr. Grail is way handier with his herbs than he has a paintbrush. I let a candle fire set fire to some dry straw. In my time as a butler, I've never made such a major blunder. Nah, it's not that bad. You're just being a little hard on yourself. That's right. It's not so bad. You think that's bad? You just see Nick and, tr and try to do laundry. Now that's a major blunder. Okay, that was one time. Anyways. Let's go check out Mr. Belduc's study. Oh my god, my voice for her is like slowly like dying. While we're here... Could you show us around your room a little, Mr. Grail? Of course. If it will bring you any closer to finding the truth, be my guest. However, as the Knights of the Inquisition have ordered that the crime scene be left undisturbed, undisturbed, I must ask that you refrain from touching anything while you're in the study. Sure. We'll, we'll be careful. Let's talk to you. Mr. Grail, there's something I was hoping to ask you. Uh, my eye. Certainly. What is it? This murder is the only unsolved case involving magic, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Is it really true that this crime would have been impossible without the use of witchcraft? That is the conclusion of which the knights and the High Inquisitor herself came. The crime took place behind a locked door, for one thing. Which already leads to suspicions of witchcraft. Besides. Besides? The master was loved by many people and wasn't at, at all the type to make enemies. He was kind and he was kind to everyone and not to mention Sasir. It has always been an honor to serve him. I cannot believe that anyone other than a witch would want to harm him. Hey, Nick. Uh, how do you think the culprit got into the sealed room anyway? Well, it was a witch, right? So I guess she used magic to get inside? I think we should stop calling the culprit a witch. How about magician? I'm not sure we need to start sweating over semantics. Master Belduc was loved by many people, and wasn't the type at all to have enemies. Oh, then, then, then it was on his I can't believe anyone would want to hurt him. The town is over, is over there. It's the opposite direction of the bell tower. A pretty view like this makes you forget all the witches, about all the witches and murders. That's right, Maya. 
How do you forget about witches and murders? <laughs> Books and documents are neatly placed on the shelves. Girl is a very tidy person. Maybe Jean could teach me some alchemy and, and you on how to keep your desk tidy, Nick. Great. Thanks, Maya. I talked to you already. Is that a mini bar? What's all those those bottles? Maya, don't drink it. Who knows what kind of strange mixtures the alchemist kept in those bottles? Oh, am I supposed to look at this? The box cover covers slight burn marks from a, from a small fire. They could have painted that over with the same green paint as, as the wall. I don't think so. I got a little careless and failed to properly extinguish a fire. I painted the wall green as to cover the discoloration caused by the, by the fire. Okay. Is that it? I thought I thought they said there'd be more, so I'm I'm quite curious. Okay, whatever. Let's save. Boop 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 boop. Boop 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 boop. boop. <laughs> And we're out. You don't want me to touch anything in here, right? But, uh... But, uh, I need hint coins. Hey, look, Nick! They're... they're on the floor. It's one of those... whatchamacallits. You know, a crop circle, right? That's an alchemist circle, Maya. We're not in a wheat field. I'm sorry to repeat myself, but please, please be sure not to touch anything. You heard him, Maya. That means keep your hands to yourself. No problem. I'll just do the touching with my eyes. With your eyes? Hey, hint coin one. Don't mind me touching everything. But, uh, hint coins need to be found, and if you don't let me find them, then we're gonna have a problem. Uh, whoops. Okay. Thank you, Earl. Or, what's your name? Gray Earl? Jean. That's your name. Jean? <laughs> what's the matter, Mr. Gray Earl? Oh, it's, uh, actually, it's that pendant. I must say, I find it fascinating. Oh, you mean this old thing? It's called a Magatama. Magatama? Yep. You could say it's kind of like my source of power, I guess. I understand. Stones are often charged with energy, after all. The pendant you're wearing is pretty neat, too. It's such a mysterious color. Oh, this? It's an amethyst. Master Belduke asked me to wear it. An amethyst? The amethyst brings out brings out good vibrations. In an alchemy sense. Mr. Grey Earl? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just remembering Master Belduke. He gave me the stone and accepted me as his assistant alchemist. But now, Master, such is the older order of the natural world. Seems like Grail really misses him. He must have really respected Mr. Sir, Sir, Sir Belduc. Yeah, it's sad, huh? Losing, like, your master like that? Oh, I, what the fuck? That's the globe of the night sky. The alchemist was, was an astronomer. Or maybe he was into astrology? He had a bottle of wine on his desk. <laughs> a curious shaped implement. A curiously shaped implement. No idea what it's used for. This could be a device for turning bread into gold. Uh-huh. Let your imagination run wild, Maya. Jesus, okay. The cabinet might, might have contained the alchemist's research materials, but it's been emptied. Only some junk's been left behind. Important. 
it looks like a load of white powder has been scattered all, all around the, the desk. Well, I think we know what happened. <laughs> bro, bro started shooting up. <laughs> That's why the door was locked. Yeah, nobody could, nobody could find out about his greatest creation, cocaine. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> uh, Sir, Sir Belduk, are you okay? I'm fine! <laughs> it's nothing! <laughs> um, about this white powder. Has it been here since the incident? That's right. It was just like this when I entered the room on the morning of the incident. I left it this way. I've left it this way ever since. I guess someone must have dropped a container full of some medicine. Please, do, try not to walk on it. It may leave footprints. Now that you said it, all I, all I want to do is leave little old footprints all over the place. It'll be like Maya was here. All right, let's let's question the circle. Oh, it's a magic circle. It's neatly drawn, and it sure looks magical. I guess... I guess it's the kind of stuff you're into, being a spirit medium. Hey, are you okay? He doesn't want to say anything to us. Uh, am I missing anything else? I feel like I've, I've looked at everything. Oh, ping ting. Hey, that's a pretty little picture over there. We could use a picture like that in the office, don't you think? If we could hang it right next to Charlie. Hmm? What is it, Nick? The wall behind the, the picture frame. The wall? Oh, bad. It seems like there's some kind of green mark on the wall by the painting. I wonder if there's something hidden behind the painting. Hey, Nick, look at this! The wall behind the painting. It's painted green. Is there a problem? Oh, uh, no. No problem. Hmm. This could be some kind of clue. Wall behind painting. Add it to... Okay. Well, I think we just about investigated everything we can, we can for now. But we didn't find any leads on the Great Witch. Uh, Mr. Grayrel? Yes? What is it? Is there anything else you, you can think of where we might find more clues? Let me see. Well, there is a cellar under the study. That's where the master keep, kept his research materials. A cellar's... A cellar's... A cellar... Under this room. Yes. There's a trap door in the floor, leading down to the cellar. A room containing Belduk's research materials. If you don't mind, I'd like to have a quick look at the room. I see. Very well. If you'll please just wait a moment. Oh, look at that. The ladder leads down into the cellar, but be careful. It's rather dark down there. It looks like it might just be a little cramped down there, too. That's true. Perhaps it is too small for the both of you to fit at once. Okay, Nick. This seems like more... This seems more like your kind of thing, anyway. What do you mean? I don't know. I guess you're just more suited in small, dark, damp places. I'm not a rat, you know. Come on. You know that's not what I mean. I'll just stay up here and snoop around some clues. It's not snooping, Maya. It's investigating. Anyway, you do that. I'll be right back. Yay! Way to go, Nick! Well, I should return to my room. Please, give me a call as soon as you're both finished. Okay, got it. Why are you leaving? Why are you leaving? Don't leave. Come back. <laughs> Also, this is big enough to fit both of us. 
there's a golden sheep right there. <laughs> Brr, it's a little chilly down here. Doesn't look like there's it's been used much. The air is so musty and stale. Anyway, better hurry up and take a look around. There's hint coins here. Hold up. Gotta find hint coins. It's playing some really sad music. Okay, that's all of them. Looks like a sculpture of a goat, I think. Something about it gives me the creeps. Wait a second, is this? This thing is completely made out of gold. Could this be the result of alchemy? I guess in this town anything's possible. If Maya was here, she'd break her back trying to take that goat away with her. That's strange. Almost everything in this room is covered in a layer of dust. Everything except for that goat, that is. Seems to have been kept in pristine condition. Well, hey. Have you heard of something called Midas's Touch? <laughs> Uh, hmm? What's this? A map? Looks like Sir Belduke studied alchemy here too. I don't see anything medicine-like, but there is sure a lot of equipment. This desk is pretty messy. Not a speck of dust, though. I guess the Grail must have been keeping it clean. There's a wooden box by the desk, filled with all kinds of junk. A doll peeping out of the box. I wonder if it was left by a little girl who was once the doctor's patients. It looks like Sir Beldu carried out research here as well. Well, I guess I counted as, as looking at the desk. Plenty of sketches and drawings. Nothing useful for us. What was Belduke's research about? Will all his work be lost now that he's gone? We look at the well, I guess. Well, well, well. If it isn't a well. Looks like it's still in use, too. I'm guessing you need quite a bit of water to clean for alchemy. Come to think of it, I haven't noticed any plumbing in Labyrinthia. You haven't? Well, looks like I've pretty much seen all that there is to see down here. The room doesn't doesn't seem to have been, been used much. And there's nothing... There's nothing I could see that might lead to provide a lead, but if I stay here any longer, I might just end up covered in dust myself. Not to mention, standing here sighing is is clogging up my lungs. Maybe it's time to head back upstairs. I should probably see how Maya's doing. Maya! Hello, Maya! Am I about to be turned to gold? Hello, what the hell? This is the alchemist's house. Ah, oh, <laughs> what the? This is the alchemist's house. <laughs> we have to hurry. <clears throat> Pro Professor! Wait! Wait for me! Miss Faye! Hi, Professor. What's up? You look flushed. Where's Mr. Wright? Have you seen him? Oh, Nick. He's just down in the basement doing some investigating. He should be back up soon. Yep. So how did it go? Did you get to see the storyteller? Please, get Mr. Wright immediately. It's safer if we're all together in one place. I'll explain later. Just hurry. Huh? As things stand, Mr. Wright is in serious danger. Nick's in danger? That's right. What do you mean? I have reason to believe that a witch will appear here soon. Huh? <gasps> Oh, sh oh, shit! Oh? Hmm. Oh, fuck! Oh, shit! All is as written in the story. Fuck you! Do you happen to be the Great Witch Bazella? Concern yourselves not with who I am, but rather with what you will now become. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, dearie, dearie me. 
Whatever is the matter, child? You look positively flushed. Sir Belduke is no longer a resident here. You'll need to make... You uh, uh, you'll need to go... I need to, I need to get rid of a different voice. <laughs> you'll need to go elsewhere for your medicants. I know that. Let me through. This is a matter of life and death. Of life and death, you say? If so, then I may foresee a hit ballad. Raise up your hearts and sing with Birdly. My bird is Cracker. Firstly, second, and thirdly. Oh, this must be that rival Mr. Bodley was talking about. Anyway, I'm in a hurry. Oh, deary, deary me. <laughs> Not the drunk. <laughs> Oh, shit! Professor! It, it wasn't me! Huh? What the? Great. Great. Uh, the fucking Maya dog. That's not the thing. What the fuck? Professor. The words the storyteller wrote really did come true. Yeah. And in the worst possible way, a man from afar falls to a golden curse. Mm -hmm. At first, I thought he was referring to Mr. Wright. But I got it all wrong. It was about the professor. Professor! Professor! Ah, <laughs> oh, shit! God damn it, Professor. Maya's gonna sit there being being sad too. You know she is. <laughs> Professor, <laughs> Professor Lane has turned to gold, gold statue to witchcraft and alchemist's residence. How could this be? <laughs> Professor, <laughs> Professor, no. <laughs> what happened? No, oh, Professor. Hey, we're rich. All right. We gotta save Maya. I'm... I missed... I missed puzzles? They must have been early. Every chance you get, you got... <laughs> You got to check everywhere, dog. It it doesn't make sense. How could it come to this? That darn witch. That darn witch. Why did it have to happen to the professor of all people? <laughs> you got to believe me, Nick. I may be a spirit medium, but I'm no witch. Don't worry, I know it wasn't you. Say, have you seen Luke today? I haven't seen him since last night. He was crying all night. I didn't know what to say to him. No kidding. He's the one suffering the most from all this. Poor kid. He probably needs some time alone with his grief. We should leave him be. Yeah. He shouldn't have to see this trial. It'd be too hard for him. Oh, hi, Spella. Oh, it's Espella. What are you doing here, Espella? Have you been cleared of the accusations? No, not yet. If only it was if only it was that easy. It's just that I'm not technically under arrest, so I got special per permission to come here. I'm free to go wherever I like within this building. I see. Um, I I heard about Mr. Layton. It's awful. He was such a good man. I'm sorry, Espella. Huh? What are you apologizing for? We were supposed to find clues connected to Bazella, but we couldn't find anything. And now the professor's been... No, don't say that. It's not your fault. 
And I don't believe a word of what they say about Maya. She isn't a witch. Thank you, Spella. Um, Mr. Wright? Do you mind if I assist you in court today? Huh? I, I know I may not be much use, but I'll do what I can. I want to help you and Maya. Espella. Excuse me. Is it Luke? Oh, it's... It's Grero. What's your name? John. Jean. You're... Grero. Butler of the great Master Bell... The, of the late Ma Master Bell, Bell Duke. I came here to inquire after Miss Maya. It is most regrettable what happened yesterday. Oh, thank you for coming all the way here. Hmm? You look pale, Jean. John? Is something wrong? Oh, please don't worry about me. It's merely that, since the incident, sleep has eluded me. Oh, I spent the night searching through Master's notes of, on alchemy. I hope there may be, may be some mention of a method of which something can be turned to gold, maybe reverted back to its original form. You're looking for a way to rescue the professor? Human fate is often cruel, but that's also why we must never lose hope. Jean! John! Defender! Accused! The trial is about to, to start! Proceed to the chamber! And yes, we're, we're coming. And Nick. Cheer up, Maya. I'm not going to let this let them sentence you. I just wish all this would stop already. Whether someone's a witch or not, no one deserves to be burned. I know. I can't stand for it either. If only you'll, if you'll kindly excuse me, I must return to my duties. Ah, no problem. We, um, appreciate you coming to see us. Something's bothering me. John sees someone odd today. Gene, fuck, I keep saying John. Gene? John? Is it John? Mr. Wright, let's go. The trial's about to begin. Okay, we're on our way to a trial. This is scary. What a scary position to be in. Hanging over a pit of fire. Ah, <clears throat> oh, shit, you're back. Maya Fey shall now begin as scheduled as what as scheduled not scheduled as scheduled <laughs> as scheduled knights of the court are you ready to cross your swords of justice inquisitor zacharias barnum always has his sword ready for the work of justice uh defense ready your honor Yay! At this stage, I've just got to give it all I've got! It would appear the Defender has thrown down the gauntlet, Sir Barnum. Now, before we begin... What the fuck? No, I haven't! Have a word with you? Def yes, Your Honor! Oh, whoops. Last time we met, you stood in this court as an apprentice baker. Yeah? In all honesty, when I saw you for the first time, I thought to myself, a baker should stick to bread baking. Yeah. Is that so? What a fine first impression I made. However, today you are not merely some befuddled maker of sweet buns. I'm obliged to fully recognize you. As a knight of law and justice, on par with Inquisitor Zacharias Barnum. Oh yeah, yeah I am. I'm on the same level as you, fucker. Yeah. Now may your duel begin. Fight bravely and expose the truth behind this heinous crime. All right. We're all counting on you, Inquisitor Barnum. I knew she was a witch as soon as I laid my eyes on her. She's got witch written all over oh, her. They need to shut up. Why not put the baker on trial? Bake the baker, I say. Barnum! 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 Great, we always find ourselves in these situations where we just they treat him like everybody some sort of hates celebrity. us. He may be adored by the crowds, but when he pointed his sword my way, you managed to shield me from his accusations. Maya clearly isn't a witch, so surely your victory is certain. 
Thank you for believing in me, Espella. Espella Cantabella. <gasps> yes. I have given you leave to come to this trial today. However, that does not mean that the charges against you have been dropped. Rather than worry about others, you should consider your own situation. What the fuck? And? Thank you for granting me your permission, Inquisitor. All of your acting pretentious as fuck, alright? We just need to calm down, think about our situation, and just go with the trial. <laughs> uh, what was your voice? Inquisitor Barnum, you may, you may begin your opening statement. Was that your voice? <laughs> as you wish, my lord. As usual, let us commence this trial by first recounting the events. If it pleases you, Sir Blue Knight. As, uh, you wish, Inquisitor. <laughs> I still can't get used to this terminology. This heinous crime occurred in the residence of the, of the late Newton Belduke, the alchemist. Here is the sketch plan of his residence. This room, of a somewhat questionable nature, is the alchemist's study in which the incident took place. The only ones present at the moment were the accused of the crime, were the accused and the victim, no one else. Blech. The witnesses, who arrived at the scene seconds later, have indicated where they found the accused and the victim. Very well. The, the sketch is accepted as, as evidence. God damn, is that your voice? Should I should I go back in my VOD and wait? What was your voice? <laughs> Why don't I remember it? Hold up, give me a second. I'm doing this. I need I need it for continuity's sake is all. Hold up, give me a second. Just shh shh shh. I I need I need to know what it what his voice was. Okay, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where is it? Everybody else needs to stop talking and I need where is the voice? Okay, got it. The vendor enlighten us. <laughs> got it. <laughs> Very well. The sketch is accepted as evidence. Floor plan added to the court record. The accused took Sir Layton's life with the most cruel of magic. A living man one second, a golden statue the next. Such wickedness. Magic that turns things into gold? Sure, why not? Several townspeople rushed to the room and paid witness to the horror of this magic. The accused has been captured and charged. Goodness, that is terrifying! Promise have reached me is that the victim was, mo was the most scintillating man! I'm not quite certain of whether it was prior to or after, but incidentally, was this Sir Layton not the same hat maker who attended our previous trial? No, no, he wasn't a hat maker. Bizarre as it is. Sir Layton's profession and origin remain unknown. He was a stranger in the city. That is all we know. And you, sir, his acquaintance. You're an unusual presence in, within our city yourself. <laughs> Today's trial certainly is particular. And that is not the last of the pecu peculiarities, my lord. The alchemist study has been a scene of another strange incident in the past. Ah yes, I remember it as if it was yesterday. The mysterious death of Newton Belduke himself. Indeed, my lord. Regrettably, the only case of witchcraft still yet to be rem remain unsolved in our fair city. The witch may have escaped her punishment back then. But perhaps today is the day on which both these mystery mysterious crimes shall be solved. What? What are you implying? Patience. You will know soon enough, Sir Sunly Pale Blue Knight. How interesting. It seems 
that the Inquisition have something up their sleeve. Now, Inquisitor Butterfly, you may begin. Oh, his voice was the voice that fucked me up. Thank you, my lord. The Inquisition summons the, witness the witnesses of this malicious crime of witchcraft. Wow, I can't read. If only... If only I'd made it to the room sooner. Maybe I could have prevented all this from happening. I won't let Maya get... Take the rap for this. I'll find every crack in their testimony and prove it wasn't her. Yay, second trial. Welcome to the Witches Court, Honorable Witnesses. Now, let me hear your names and occupations. Holy fuck, Amir. Jesus, what happened? You got like the whole like four swords colors on you and like you got like dripped out. <laughs> I'm known <clears throat> I'm known far and wide as Amir Putenbog one, the first. Soon to be the head of, of Putenbog's retail organization, PIO. Hang on! Wait a minute, witness! Was well, that blue squire blue squire? You're that guy from the previous trial. Just what in the heck's happened to you? You look like you've been on one of those ultimate makeover shows. They don't know what that is, Phoenix. Whatever do you mean? My name is Amir Putenbog the first, soon to be head of Putenbog's retail organization, PRO. What's the meaning of this, Inquisitor? I do not care to delve into our witness's personal affairs. Looks like he remembers him all too well. What is this? Frank continue. Uh, what the fuck? Oh, dear, dear me, it is I who is usually asked the questions. I am, you see, but a humble teacher. Call me Miss Primstone. The children of Labyrinthia Primary School had the privilege of learning the truths about the, this world from me. An elementary school teacher, huh? Good to know there is at least one sense witness that, that seems sensible. <clears throat> God damn it. My, my wins. Carry my song, it's a bird leap Stringing along, parrot and bard And some on the guard God damn My faithful muse Is Cracker the musical parrot No one understands music like Cracker Aside from me, naturally me. Oh damn <laughs> It's the, the parrot's voice <laughs> At least it's not another goat <laughs> Oh, what a smart bird. He just imitated that teacher perfectly. Oh, fuck. I'm Luke Triton. My occupation is the professor's assistant. Apprentice. L Luke? Luke, but why? But what are you doing there? I made up my mind. I'm doing this for the professor. A gentleman has to pursue the truth. But Luke, that's where the Inquisition witness stand. Inquisition witness stand. I, I'll never, I'll never forgive that witch. A gentleman shouldn't glare at people as if he wants to hit them in the face. L Luke, your friend came. Your friend today came to be your enemy tomorrow. Such is the hard reality of the battlefield. Witnesses, we will now hear your testimonies. Tell us all the, wi the wicked incident, which you have been unfortunate to enough to witness. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to slowly transition his voice into, into something I can do more comfortably. Goddamn, is this, that voice is going to kill me. I, I heard a scream nearby, an incantation. And when I entered the room, the victim was already all shiny. Mayhaps something caused discord between er erstwhile friends? Sir Silkat had a knife and at the ready in his hand. Victims of magic, sparkly and done for. I heard the staff fall on the floor. The professor must have seen through Miss Maya's deception and confronted her right there and then, face to face. I hate this. I hate this cast. <laughs> I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate them. <laughs> I hate these witnesses. I see. Oh, thank you all. However, one part of your testimony was confusing. You there, singer. 
Singer, could you possibly mean me, Birdly the Bard, Your Excellence? Yes, it would be you, Singer. The staff that you said sung about. Great, it's another staff. <laughs> it is as you suspect, my lord. This very witch's scepter. Huh? There are two different magic gems attached, meaning the perpetrator could have used two types of magic. Yeah, it would seem so. This gem here enables you to use gold. <laughs> it's the same staff. Gold transmutation <laughs> spell. Golder. Golder! Just the word alone makes me makes the tiny hairs on my back and my neck stand up. <laughs> That's the one, alright. That's the dreadful incantation that I, Amir Putinbog the first, also heard. Oh, dearie, dearie me. I've also seen that specter, so I have. Clink! Tips over the golden man. The scepter falls. Not the pl not the witch's plan. Oh, dearie, dearie me! <laughs> How dare she do that to the professor? By the way, this witch's scepter was found near the floor, near the victim. Uh, po a mere poopin bag. <laughs> Punching bag. <laughs> if you'll turn your attention to the sketch plans, it was located here. A scepter dropped by the accused would naturally tumble in this in this exact spot. Objection! Inquisitor Barnum, what you're saying amounts to nothing more than baseless assumption. You're on edge today, Sir Blue Knight. Is it because your friend is on trial? Perhaps you better cool yourself down. Well, anyway, the court brings us up there as evidence. Thank you, my lord. The Talea Magica. Goldor transmutates the caster's solid into solid gold. The spell will transmutate the closest target within in, within range. Okay. Um, Inquisitor Barnum, may I ask you something? What is it now, Sir Blue Knight? We know that one of the gems is for the spell Goldor, but what about the other one? A naive question. Huh? Naivety has no hindrance to a baker, who spends most of his time amidst bread. But it can do your undoing it can be your undoing here in court. Would a knight put a weapon in his enemy's hand? He's telling me that to do my homework, huh? Mr. Wright, I'll look for the information about that magic gem in the Grand Grimoire. Thank you, Espella. That would be great. Just leave it to me. She seems very happy to help. That's... Oh. Uh, she's... I don't know if I want to say this. She's very... <laughs> Is she she's very cute like this. <laughs> I'm so cringe. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> the defender may take the witnesses. Uh. Uh. Okay. Okay. I didn't see any clear contradictions. I just need. I didn't. I didn't even look at the evidence so far. That's what's hap- okay. Oh. What gem is this one? Welcome to my... Renew your definition. Why are you coming in? What the heck? He's gonna be important. <laughs> Why is he on the witness list if he's not going to be important? <laughs> this is the problem! Alright, we're just going to... And, um, uh, what about this... Uh, uh, what is this all about, exactly? What do you mean, Blue Squire? Your gaudy, um, colorful outfit. I mean, your attire is different from last time. A little more modest. The Amir you knew back then is no more. I am a new man now, reborn into the higher echelons of society. 
What is he drinking? There's a skull and crossbones mark on that bottle. Enough of this idle ch ch chitter. Ch ch chitter? Chatter. The witness heard a scream and an incantation. Is that correct? That's right. It's just like you said earlier, Requisitor Bonham. It was the spell Golder. And it was, without a doubt, the voice of the accused that said it. Mm. However, ugh, my god, his voice. When I saw the when I, when I saw the accused and the victim last together, they seemed to be on friendly terms. The next witness may dispel your doubts, my lord. Hold it! Are you saying that they that you think they quarreled? The other day I saw you all together in this very court, and you were evidently friends. Yeah. That that's true. But what's that got to do with Now everyone, listen carefully. No chatting in the back now. Uh, what I say now will be in the next exam. Miss Primstone's lesson five. Friendship leads to nothing but trouble. Wow. <laughs> People would, would not break up and part ways in anger if they did not become friends in the first place. The kids in her class must grow up to be model citizens. Oh, dare me. What is that I saw in that room curdled in the blood of my veins? Mr. Sokai was pointing in the glitter. No way! Was, what, what do you got to say about that? Mr. Sokai was pointing that glittering knife ever so threateningly. Hang on! Luke? Is everything, is everything okay, Luke? No, of course not. Of course it's not okay. The professor is a true gentleman. And no gentleman will go around threatening people with knives. I couldn't agree more. Silly boy! I saw your professor pointing a knife. Are you insinuating that I am a liar, you cheeky little war dipper snapper? The professor would never do that. You don't you don't know him. At least Luke's found someone else to antagonize. <laughs> um, Mr. Wright? Hmm? What is it? I think there's some important information in Miss Primstone's testimony. Really? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not my place to say things like that. Mm, I didn't notice anything. What could that be? What was Espella about to say? No, Espella, help me. Espella, why don't you tell us what you've noticed? Oh, is that okay? I... It's just something I'd like to ask Miss Primstone about. Well, go ahead and ask her. Um, excuse me, Miss Primstone? Do you mind me asking you a question? Oh, it's you, Miss Espella Cantabella! Miss Primstone, did you actually see the knife that Mr. Leighton was holding? I I did. As a matter of fact, yes. I remember that gl glinting blade as well. A most frightening sight. It was too. And you saw that. And you saw that from the, the door, didn't you? Now, if we look at the sketch. Do my job for me, Isabella. Like, uh, like take it. <laughs> when the incident took place, Mr. Leighton must have been looking, facing this way, correct? That, that must have been the case. Otherwise, the witness would not have been able to see it. Um, well, that's all I wanted to ask. There, the more information we have, the better, right? The direction the professor was facing. That could be important. This information shall be ordered to the court record! No, no, no! <laughs> I'm sorry to jump in like that, but I really wanted to help. Not at all, Spella. We were able to get more information. Which may just come in handy. You... you think so? I do! Now then, no it is shall continue with the death body! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> can I look at the, Can I look at this? It's now... he's now... Oh, pointing! <laughs> My knife! <laughs> Um, would you mind describing what you saw without singing, it, singing about it? As you wish, my musical impaired friend. Simply put, when I entered the room, the witness, or the witness, the victim was worth his weight in gold, for obvious reasons. He tipped over and, and fell heavily on the floor. 
the room became drearily silent. And then, I heard the scepter tumbling across the floor. What the fuck? Hang on! May I ask you something, Miss Primrose? Deary, deary me! Oh, deary, deary me! My dear, do not frighten me so. I feel like a schoolgirl caught napping during class. Miss Primstone, did you see the witch's scepter at the crime scene? Well, about, about that, I must confess, I do not clearly recall. You don't remember. When I went into the room, the main ghoul man fell and made quite the ruckus. This is why I did not notice the scepter being dropped. So you didn't see it after all. But I am certain that the witch girl had it. She must have been hiding it behind the back. Objection. That's not true. Please don't assume that Maya's wish just because she's been accused. Miss Primstone is certainly quick to make the assumptions. I see. Uh, now I would like to hear the next witness's testimony. The next witness is a bit problematic. Hold it! Luke, open your eyes. Maya isn't a witch. God damn it, Luke. He's fucking useless. <laughs> Ever since we came to this town, lots of unbelievable, unbelievable things have been happening. And that's why, from now on, I'll only believe what I see with my own eyes. Luke, when we went into that room, the only people we saw were the Professor and Maya. The Professor had, had been turned to gold, and Maya had dropped that scepter. That's not true. What? Maya, I didn't have any scepter, and we weren't the only ones in that- Silence! The accused has no right to speak. Be silent or you will face punishment. We can end this trial immediately, should you decide to feel talkative again. I, uh, I'm sorry. Well, Luke, is this really the truth? Huh? Um... Did you see the scepter? Did you? I... I don't know. When the professor turned to gold and collapsed in front of me, everything seemed to fade to black. And then, I could have sworn that I at least heard Maya drop the scepter. The scepter was found at the, the scene of the crime. That is an unavoidable truth. Only the accused could have dropped it. Mm, uh. This isn't looking good. I feel so sorry for Luke. He's so full of anger and despair that he can't think clearly. He said that he can't forgive the witch, so I understand how he feels. Anyway, I need to find a way to calm Luke down first of all. What? So what? That's the hint you give me? Okay, um... Let me save. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> bum, bum. The, the professor must have... Oh. They weren't face to face, though. He was pointing somewhere else. You fucking idiot! <laughs> you got you dummy! Luke, you said you only believe what you saw with your own eyes. But what you think but what you think you saw may not be the whole truth. Huh? What do you mean? Take a close look at the sketch of the crime scene. At the time of the incident, Professor Lane and Maya were standing here. Now, we have learned from Miss Primrose's testimony which way the professor was facing. He was facing this way. Oh. We have testified that the professor confronted Maya face to face. But looking at the sketch of where they were standing, one thing is clear. There is a contradiction in your testimony. Ah! Oh, stupid. Look how short he looks. Objection! What are they facing? Uh, 
Whether they were facing each other or not is, no, is, is of no re relevance whatsoever. They were the only ones in that room. One was the victim, thus the other must be the witch. Objection! I will ask you to wait before jumping to conclusions, Inquisitor. Think back to Miss Primstone's testimony. She told us that the professor was pointing a knife at someone threateningly. Huh? Oh fuck, you're right! <laughs> However, you can see in the sketch that he wasn't threatening Maya. So then, who was he pointing the knife at? Luke, what is it? The professor would have never pointed a knife at anyone. I was the only one who opened the door to that room, so I was the first witness, and I saw no knife. Miss Primstone's testimony is not reliable. Oh, dear me, when you look at this child sputtering nonsense and talking badly of his elders. Inquisitor Bonham? Yes, my lord. Oh, uh, that's the wrong voice. It should pose no difficulty to verify whether the, the whether or not the victim had a knife. After all that, sparkly the gold body of his would have been found at the scene of the crime, has it not? Indeed, it has, my lord. Court attendants. You heard the judge. Bring the victim into the courtroom. It seems like they're going to bring the gold statue. Professor. P Professor! Professor! Did they reattach his arm? Nope. I it's still gone. Look at that! Uh, did it get damaged in transit? Professor! Professor! Where is his arm? We... <laughs> Guys, the arm is in the same room. Just fucking reattach it at least. Like you guys you guys got some glue or something? So this is the power of the wait, what was this way? No, this is the power of transmutation of gold transmutation spell. Most spectacular, it looks like it worked the finest. The finest of artisans. I assure you that it is the work of no artisans, my lord. By the way, its missing arm has not been found yet. It's right there! <laughs> I... I can't believe this! Professor! I suppose we should add the victim to the evidence. <laughs> the professor, who... Who, while searching for evidence, became evidence. <laughs> Sorry, Leighton. This is unfortunate. I thought the evidence could be as good as gold. But although it, is, it technically is, we're still no closer to discerning whether or not the victim was holding a knife. Hold it. Let me speak. Uh, what the fuck was that voice? <laughs> Let me speak, please. Maya, the professor didn't have a knife. And also, there was another person in that room. The real witch was there. Bullet, please believe me. Accused, do I really need to warn you again? Inside of the cage, you are, to be you are to behave like a bird that has forgotten its song. Speak again and you shall be punished. Or are you are you in a particular hurry to taste the flames of justice, little bird? <laughs> Objection! <laughs> but it's true that someone else could have been at the crime scene. Look at the sketch. The victim was facing towards someone, and that person wasn't Maya. Sir Blue Knight, your ignorance is no longer even a surprise. Uh, excuse me, guys. Jesus. Huh? You do not know what transpired at the crime scene. You think that this man was pointing at another person, you say? Let me tell you this. Nearly everyone in this court, other than you, saw what Mr. Hat was pointing at. What? What? Well, honorable witnesses, is it not so? I, Amir Pumbak the First, love me some gossips and stories of the occult. Elusive like the mist, magical beast, its chilling breath brings about death. Your rhymes suck. <laughs> oh, dearie, dearie me. You could use some education, Blue Knight. I can offer you private tuition, but it will not come cheap. If the professor wasn't confronting Maya, 
What it says you can now justify. Tell us about tell us about all this other presents in the corner. <clears throat> the shadow of at the crime scene. I see. We all know what, what happened to that alchemist. So is those kids no mystery. Same place, same magic trick. This time her luck ran out when she dropped that magic scepter. The truth obscured by a twisted ruse. The witch couldn't have vanished, but did confuse. It happened because the professor unraveled the mystery behind all these witches. The same magic trick was used? They're referring to the incident from three months ago. Much like this incident, a man lost his life to witchcraft in that very room. It was the master of the residence, Sir Newton Belduke, the, al the alchemist. He suffered, he suffered death by strangulation. Finger marks on his, were left on his neck. He had even locked himself in the study and that key was left in his pocket. In other words, no one could have entered that room. The perpetrator disappeared from a locked room, just like this case. <sighs> a large amount of powdered medicine was spilt all over the floor. Powdered medicine? Sir Belduc was an alchemist. He possessed various me medicinal concoctions. Due to the presence of that powder, had anyone entered that room, clear footprints would have remained. Yet there were none. That's the kind of mystery the professor would have loved to solve. Luke. <laughs> Jesus, man. He's going through it. Thus, there were two unnatural circumstances of Sir Belduc's death. The culprit's disappearance from the locked room, and the fact that they disappeared... They appeared to not have walked in the room. It's almost as if they flew. In other words, it couldn't have been the Demir's magic that was used in my case the other day. It seems like the killer levitated above the floor, strangled Belduc, and vanished into thin air. But what does it have to do with this trial? It has been three months since that murder. Despite that, we still haven't been able to find the witch responsible. Leviosa? Leviosa? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leviosa. <laughs> but now, having eluded us for so long, that witch has finally been brought to the. before this court. We will have justice. <laughs> what? No way. Now he thinks Maya killed the alchemist too? We weren't even here back then. And, but it's, uh, but it's not like I can explain that to him. Well then, why don't you interrogate the witnesses? Now that you're aware of the connection between the two murders. Objection! You can't be serious. Three months ago, we weren't even. Defender, you may interrogate the witnesses. May their testimonies lead us to the truth. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Uh, whoops. Hold it! Amir, you've been useless in this case so far. You're talking about Mr. Belduc's murder, which took place in the locker room? Yeah, a real shocker, right? Everyone was talking about it. People don't say this out loud, but, you know, you're thinking it too, eh? I don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. Ain't it clear as day? It was an alchemist. An alchemist! Alchemy's just like magic, ain't it? Sir Belduc was a man. Only, only a woman can be a witch. What's more, witchcraft has nothing to do with alchemy. They're different, somehow. Alchemy is a mysterious art of manipulating forces of nature. Or so it is said. Well, it sounds more like magic to me. Alchemy's in in <laughs> to regular people. It's all magic, really. Ain't no a couple of days before the witch got him. There was that lightning that struck. Lightning? Glad you asked him, because I'm telling now. All of a sudden, a ball of lightning from the blue sky. There was the bolt of that. There was this bolt from the sky, only it wasn't blue. The sky lit up and all blood red. 
And then, out of nowhere, an old looking bell tower appeared and burst flames. Makes you realize Mother Nature's pretty powerful stuff, eh? <laughs> You're straight off topic of hand, witness. This is a courtroom, not an inn. Save your thrilling stories for later. Hey, it's important though. Hold it! What? Okay. Would you care to elaborate on that, Miss Princeton? You could say that I'm a scholar, and my magic is vast and device, diverse. I know a thing or two about witchcraft. Therefore, I have a good idea what type of magic that could have been used at the time. The magic behind this mysterious figure that appeared out of nowhere glided through the air and vanished after making a kill? Yes, indeed. And the witch is to confirm that theory. A brilliant deduction. I am honored to have studied under such an excellent teacher such as yourself, Miss Primstone. She was his teacher? Actually, I guess that kind of explains a lot. Our occult crime analysts have arrived at the same conclusion. Mr. Wright, I found it. The page about the purple magic gem. The spell's name is Familia. Fam Famamila. Fam Famalia. Famalia. Famamia. Famalia. <laughs> Malia, what what does it do? The the spell of Malia, bound within its purple gem, is used to summon a familiar. Familiars appear out of nowhere, glide through the air, and vanish when their task is accomplished. They're evil, bloodthirsty spirits, used by witches to perform outrageous crimes. Evil spirits. Are you saying that the witch used used a familiar too? Luigi, I feel familiar. Go out the back and break your knees. <laughs> I love the Italian mafia. <laughs> it was a familiar that took Belduc's life, and now it has appeared again. Sir Silkat was probably trying to ward off the evil spirit with his with his knife. And what good is a knife against an occult creature? It completed the task given given by the witch and probably vanished. Thus, bringing us to the conclusion that Sir Belduke and Sir Silkat were both killed by the same witch. I see. That's why we're that's why we're coming to this conclusion, huh? Oh fuck! What an unexpected turn of events! The two incidents have been shown to be connected. Due to the same witch's scepter having been used in both cases! The Teletal Magica. Okay. Summons forth a magical familiar from the shadows. Although it possesses a physical form, it, com it is completely weightless. Oh, this is terrible. Now Maya is accused of two murders. Oh, dearie, dearie me. I was right as well. As always, fuck. This gruesome murder will be in the next exam. Be sure to take notes! Now, I shall diverge what really happened. We're all ears, Miss Primrose. She's crazy. This this woman's crazy. Hold it! Did you actually see the familiar? Oh dearie dear me, no I did not. When that boy opened the door, the familiar had just disappeared. Had the boy opened the door sooner, no doubt we would have seen it. If you're my student, I would have made sure to teach you not to do What do Come you gotta on. say, Luke? Is everything okay, Luke? You seem to be deep in thought about something. No, that's not right at all. Is there something in Primstone's testimony that you'd like to comment on? That's what I keep telling you. The professor wouldn't point a knife at anyone. Dearie, dearie me. What an impertinent child. I'm telling you, I saw a knife. I saw distinctly a glint of a shiny sharp blade. At any rate, as we can see now, the victim's arm is missing. As such, there's no, there's no proof that he had he had a knife. Objection. That is, but a mere detail. It matters not. A mere detail matters not. Oh my! Any 
Anyhow, I uh, what, what is your voice? Anyhow, I wonder, where could that missing arm be? Y yeah, that ought to be looked into. Hang on! Did you steal his... Mister, do you have something you'd like to share with us? Did you steal his arm? <laughs> and sold it? Mr. Amir. It's Amir Putin Bog the Fest to you, Bluey. Relax, you oughta. Show some respect to a future man of wealth such as me. You seem to be looking ahead to the future full of newly gained riches. I can look whatever I bloody please. Anyway, what you looking at me like that? I don't know about that golden bloke's right arm. Excuse me, sir. Mr. Wright? What is it, Espella? I may be wrong, but there's something about that man. When you say he looks, uh, suspicious? It's not just you. Everything about him seems so shady, it makes me want to double-check my pockets. Mr. Amir, please stop pretending you don't know anything about the victim's, mix victim's missing arm. Pr pr pretending? I told you I know nothing. Nada. Zero. Nil. I ain't seen it, and I or heard about it, or put it in my pocket. Put it in your pocket? It wasn't me, honest. Seriously, I got nothing to do with it. Objection! Amiya! You lying, cheating, good for nothing, you tried to deceive me! Oh shit, I'm like, who is that? <laughs> You really did sell his arm. Oh, order, order. Oh, is that person? Hmm. <laughs> I didn't think we see this guy in, in court, really. What was his voice? You know who I am. You want to know who I am? I'm Price, the prom broker. And this man is a shameless cheating bum. He had the nerve to lie to me. What did he lie to you about? I'll tell you. On the day of the crime, Amir came to my shop. He walked up to me because he got his hands on his superb work of art, as rare as gold dust. I think I know where this is going. That work of art. Could it be? I've got it right here. Fucking great, dog. Just like I thought. That's... Oh my... Professor! That's the professor's arm! Where did the other two witnesses go? <laughs> it's pure gold, exquisitely crafted. It was entitled Towards Tomorrow. Or something like that. I'd never seen a piece of gold so fine before. And so, suspecting nothing, I paid that rascal a rather handsome for some money. Who, who would have thought... And what am I here now? That it was a human arm, no less. You, sir, are a monster. You're as bad as the witch's familiar yourself. I, I didn't know it was his arm. I swear. When I saw it, it was already like that. What do you mean? I was the last at the scene, and it caught my eye right away. That golden arm was pointing at the ceiling with optimism and authority. I thought, it looks like it's showing me to a better way, brighter, richer tomorrow. To me, it was a work of art, a precious one, at that. And then you f it found its way into your pocket and you pawned it? You mounted it on a crude stand, gave it a tawdry title, and passed it off as some kind of sculpture. Don't try to look away from the truth now. Darn it. I can look wherever I die, please. I'll look away from the facts and, and forward to the future. Always look on the bright side. That's a me and Putin Bog's motto. Fucking really? <laughs> Where are we now? Ah, uh, yes. The victim's arm has been successfully reattached by one of the master craftsmen. Guards of the Knights of the Gort. You may presume your Inquisition. At least, one thing's clear now. 
everyone can see, the victim was definitely not holding a knife. <laughs> oh, dearie, dearie me. It seems I have been mistaken after all. When you think about it, the victim had already been turned to gold when he went to the room. According to the witness's testimony, that was the case, yes. Well then, I'm sure you'll conclude that it was easy to mistake the, the glinting pointy finger for a knife. Indeed. The victim, the victim's finger does have a glint that resembles that of a sword's edge. A sense of power and intensity. It's enough to shend a, a shend? It's enough to send a shiver down the spine of anyone that's being pointed at. No puzzle is a, no puzzle is a match for the power of, of Professor's pointing finger. What the fuck is happening? I guess no one remembers I'm known for pointing like that too. I think your pointing finger makes quite an impression too, Mr. Wright. She's just taking pity on me. <laughs> oh, Spella, help me. Uh, they're, they're, they're not looking at me. I'm being disregarded. Is that all you have to say, Sir Blue Knight? Huh? As, as I said before, whether the victim had a knife or not, it's completely irrelevant. Y yeah, what he said. You better apologize to me right now. Badger me for no reason like that. We're badgering, badgering you for a reason. Oh my God, I had the wrong audio on the entire time. It's supposed to be this audio. Oh my God, I'm so lucky <laughs> that it caught the 3DS's audio. Oh my God. I had the wrong audio on the entire time. So, okay, let me just tell the story real quick. So, when I was recording the, um, the Fire Emblem VOD thing that I was supposed to release, but the, the files corrupted, I had to download, like, a, an audio splitter because, because while, because uh, at the time, I'd only used, like, my desktop audio, right? So, you can hear everything that, like, I can hear, right? So, I downloaded it, right? And I applied it to the 3DS. But I, I, I guess I confused it before the stream start and I didn't undo it. So it was okay. It's okay because it, it, it's basically the same, right? But if like if I was playing another game and I had that on instead of the desktop audio, I'd be like fucked, you know? The game, there would be no game sound. Okay, but we're good though. We're good here. We're good. Oh my god, that my heart fucking stopped. <laughs> okay, <laughs> is that is that all there is to it? Could that arm hold some other clues? We've come this far. Maybe there's something you can ask about. She's right. I need to ask her some more questions. Well then, Mr. Amir. Perhaps you could tell me one more thing about that arm. Uh, where was it lying? You found the arm. You found, you found the arm on the floor pointing upwards, you said. Yeah, I did. Find his keepers, I say. It was it was pointed straight up at the ceiling. The arm somehow fell, somehow happened to fall down in such a way that it landed upright. What are the odds of that? Actually, that reminds me of a puzzle. Now, if you could just show us on this floor floor plan here, I'd like to know the exact spot where where you found the victim's arm. Sure, I remember that well. It was right here. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. That's where you would expect to find a find a fallen. Now, if that's where it was, then something's definitely not right. If you keep looking at that sketch so intensely, you'll burn a hole through it. Or perhaps. You're going to claim that there's a contradiction in it somewhere? This arm is the final clue left left by the professor. Even after turning to gold, he was pointing some pointing out something important. Namely, the key to solving this case. Well, Defender, do you see any problems in the location of the mark sketch? Uh sure, there is a problem. Yeah, there's a problem. Of course there is a problem. Psh, where could where would that be, precisely? The professor's arm has armed me with some vital evidence. 
The location leads to a huge contradiction. Oh, they're back. In that case, in that case, why don't you lie us and show us the so-called contradiction? What contradiction does the victim's arm create? What? What? I don't know. I actually don't know. <laughs> My fate charges witchcraft, turning late into gold, uh, uh, painting behind the wall, uh, floor plans. I mean, if the if it's here, right? Maya's here. Leighton, he's pointing this way, though, right? Why would it land over here? Uh, Leighton. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't save either, so... Wait. Okay, I didn't save. Is it, is it the witch's staff? Cause it's over here. It's the staff. The contradiction is right here. And this is the witch, the witch's scepter. Let's go over the order of events, as per the witness's testimony. First, the witch cast a spell on the, vic on, the, on the professor, turning him into gold. When all of you rushed into the crime scene, that, that golden statue fell down, making a loud noise. Next, the witness dropped, into the, dropped the scepter. What are you getting at, Sir Blue Knight? All the witnesses agree of this order of events. That's right. They all agree that... That's how it happened. But there's an- but there's the arm. Hold up, what the fuck? Okay, we're good. But then there's the arm. Well, what about it? Spit it out. Let's assume that Maya was the witch. Now, look at the sketch again. The witch dropped the scepter after having turned the professor into gold. The scepter tumbles along the floor. It was found here, as asserted by the prosecution. However, that would be impossible. There's no way it would have happened. That could have happened. Oh, I see! <laughs> the arm. It was... I'm glad you see... You seem to have noticed. The victim's arm was was on the floor right here, standing on its end. Therefore, the scepter would have been, couldn't have possibly fallen that way. Ergo, it couldn't have been that the defendant who it couldn't have been the defendant who dropped the scepter. In other words, Maya is not the witch. Yeah! I totally knew that. <laughs> That's my attorney. Order, order, order! How can this be? The Inquisition's reasoning has been proven invalid through one single piece of unusual evidence. Call it Leighton's magic touch. The professor sacrificed his arm to leave us the evidence needed to turn this thing around. That was amazing, Mr. Wright. Professor. Objection! Admirable deduction, Sir Blue Knight. That I cannot deny. Even if we to us we are to assume that your reasoning is correct and the girl in the cage is not the witch. Even if? In the, in the many trials that I have attended to, I have become well versed in certain aspects of magic. 
I am all too aware of its potential to confuse people, befuddle their minds, and make their memories hazy. Hazy. No one can resist such a maddening influence. What are you trying to say, Inquisitor? The scepter could, could not have tumbled across the floor if the arm was in its way. However, can we be sure that that, that is where the, vic the arm was? Are all the witnesses able to confirm its location at the time? Objection. No, everybody didn't see it. We've heard, we've heard what they had to say several times now. They agreed that the scepter fell after the victim fell over. Objection. And yet, no one actually saw the scepter being dropped. Witnesses, think back to that incident once more. Did the golden, did the golden statue fall over first, or did this, or the staff fall before it? Think carefully about what you have seen and heard. Everything hinges on your testimony. May your words guide us to the truth and decide the fate of this witch, this caged witch. Damn. Ah! Ah! Mm. 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 Really? Mm. Test my once more! Oh, I didn't even read that last line. Tell us about the gold stat. Tell us about what? What is his voice? <laughs> Tell us about the gold stat. You until you back up. That was his voice. Witness testimony. I was only focusing on the professor, so I don't remember much else. I don't know. I got the last sight. That thing was glinting and glittering away, so I couldn't see much else. Bewitched by love, or beloved by a witch, the poor cove knows not which is which. Dear me, I remember how obvious it seems now. The staff was dropped before the statue fell over. Why are you backtracking now? Whoa, wait a minute. What you all said just now is totally different from your previous testimonies. Sir Blue Knight, you are, you are starting to notice it now, aren't you? That th that is the way of magic. Such is the effect. Such is the effect that this black art tends to have upon those who witness us. The witnesses are not lying, but simply are having trouble remembering the truth. What a convenient excuse! Confronted by magic, their brain turns to mush, huh? Ever since our ancestors drank from the fountains of wisdom and obtained their capacity for reason, witchcraft has been. Uh, the one thing, uh, to remain uncomprehensible, even to the most intelligent of us. Nevertheless, the honest is on us. The onus is on us to stand- what the fuck? What is it, what is it honest? The honest is honest. <laughs> is honest. To stand up against magic and pass judgment on these witches. And so, here we are, doing battle with the weapons- of the wise words with words we shall pass judgment upon those supposed witch this uh. the vendor you may begin your interrogation and help us arrive to the truth why are all of you backtracking all of you are all of you are useless oh god not hit i saw this well help i meant to hit save Please, game. Do you, who do you think I am? Bop, bop. Hold it, Luke. You said before that you heard the scepter fall to the ground, and that, and that was after the professor fell over. I thought so. I mean, I thought so before, but now, the more I think about it, the less certain that I'm actually that I am that I actually heard it. How could I be paying attention to anything else when the professor was... When he was... My memories of everything are... Are too fuzzy. I guess Luke was too shocked to take in his surroundings and notice, notice anything else. I doubt I get information out of him right now. I'm sorry, Luke. I understand how hard it is for you. Let us move on to the next witness. Okay. Hold it! <clears throat> And that thing would be... 
The arm of the shiny gen next to you, Bluey. Uh, poor Leighton. More valued now than ever was than ever before. And and you didn't notice the scepter on the floor. You know, I wasn't even looking at the floor. Me eyes were glued to the to me my new sauce income. If anything, I may have looked up at the ceiling since that's where I was pointing. Find his keepers, eh? And to be pocketed when. Go, 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 go. Someone arrest this guy, please. Shut up. Hold it. <laughs> Would you mind translating your song into plain speech? <clears throat> I will simplify it once more just for you, esteemed knight of the court. First of all, let's talk about love. It's a pretty neat slant rhyme for <laughs> cove. A cove is slang for a chap, you see. Why are you- this is what you're questioning? What? Hang on! Mr. Amir, you seem to be pondering something very deeply. Blah! <laughs> you caught me on a Wesby! Damn, Bluey! Did something Mr. Burley's statement catch your attention just now? Nah, nothing in particular, I was just thinking. That bot song really, really got to me. And I was feeling- kind of feel it to hot. I appreciate your appreciation f of my art. You know, I meant I meant to ask you something. Why don't you become me private bod? You can sing all about the heroic life of me and Pop. What? What? What did, what did I call him? Putinbog? Putinbog the first. I could gladly sing your adventures if you if it pleases you, kind sir. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Show me what you got. Very well. As per your request. Oh, Grand Amir Putinbog the first, the fortune quench your thirst. Having bravely fl filched the golden arm, now you've duped the pawn shop man. What? Man? I hope my song was to your liking, sir. Ha ha ha, yeah! Very poetic. Your drinking manner is quite inspiring. But whatever is that skull bottle hiding? So we've learned. Nothing useful at all. It's just Amir has questionable taste in music. Sometimes it is best not to probe too deeply, Sir Blue Knight. Hold it, let us pretend we hear none of that and proceed with the derogation. Fucking really? Way to waste our time, guys. Hold it! But you have you haven't said anything up about that up until now. Well, that could that couldn't have couldn't have been helped. How so? Now, now, everyone, listen well. Pencils, hand, and be sure to take notes. Miss Primstone's lesson four: Memories are not always pretty. Some things are better forgotten. Try to remember them only leads to trouble. This will be on this. This will be an exam. You are saying that the victim fell over and his arm broke off after the, septa, the septa was dropped, are you done? Correct! Well done! And, so, the contradiction is no more! Objection! Are you lying because it's convenient? But that's inconsistent with all the previous testimonies! Objection! You're quick to forget what I've told you, Sir Blue Knight. The witnesses are not lying. They are merely having trouble remembering the truth. <laughs> Excuse me. We must do our utmost to find the truth within what they say. It's no use. These guys aren't making any sense. What Inquisitor Bottom said must be true. They must have been confused by magic. Espella. We always try to make sense of what, of what, what, of what. So, what? So what we see makes no sense. We lose track of what's real. I guess that makes cross-examination a little pointless. At least, when everyone here believes that it's e easy to get confused by magic. Well, we need to do something, or else Maya will be done for. I'll listen to the witnesses again and try to find something we can use. Good luck. Sh Hold shut it. up, Bardman. 
Let's go. Let's go further into this testimony. Oh. And then you have the word witch, and it's it's a homophone witch. Uh, right. Next, we have the delightful consonants of beloved and bewitched. It is ultimately a song about confusion. I'm confused. To be honest, there's nothing more more to it. It is merely an artistic expression of my my feelings. So it's got nothing to do with this case, does it? I am I am a well of melodious words and and poetic music. That is my only claim. Ah! Oh, dearie, right. dearie me! <laughs> ah! <Hang on. laughs> I love this. I love the bird. Luke, would you like to say something? Oh, sorry. I guess I spaced out for a bit. What is it, Mr. Wright? You seem to be thinking pretty hard about something that about Mr. Birdly's song, uh, testimony right just now. Is there something you'd like to to share with us? Well, I've been thinking about Mr. about what Mr. Bonham said a while ago. What was that exactly? That humans who witness magic become confu confused and lose sight of what's real, and they end up not knowing what actually happened. Well. I was thinking Mr. Bonham might be right. And then, it occurred to me that there might be a way. I mean, we do have with us a witness who, who isn't human. Ah! Dirty! Oh, dirty, dirty me! This situation seems oddly familiar. Oh my god, Phoenix, you're cross-examining a parrot again! <laughs> I asked him earlier if he remembers the events clearly or not. He said he has a memory better than, than an elephant and remembers everything perfectly as well. That, that That's right! I almost forgot. Luke can talk to animals! Mr. Wright, I know it sounds crazy, but please, let me try. Let me let me ask Cracker to testify. Ah! Oh, dearie, dearie me! Should I? Yeah! I'm stuck. I'm stuck now anyway. And the witnesses' testimony are all over the place. A new testimony will be a wild card, but it might just be the whole the thing to turn this whole trial on its head. But it's it's a crazy idea, all right. If it, if I make a mistake now, it'll put me in a tight spot. The vendor, are you still with us? This is not the time or place to be for daydreaming. What do you tend to do? <laughs> it looks as though you've exhausted all means of the counterattack. Sir Blue and Knight, Sir Knight and Blue. It is it not time you drop your sword? If you have no further questions with the witness, defender, I shall consider your interrogation finished. What will it be then? Are you finished here? I've got zero time to think this over. I better make a choice now. Should I summon the parrot as a witness? Yes! Let's hear Cracker's testimony! <laughs> your Honor. The defense would like to summon a new witness. A new, a new... Witness, you say? Who would you have in mind? It's a witness you all know by the name of Mr. Cracker. Mr. Cracker. I know of no man by that name. Mr. Cracker! The defense summoned this new witness. Mr. Cracker the parrot. A parrot as a witness? That's right. That's right. Objection. This is the witch's court. Joking around will be will be considered a contempt of court. Objection. Mr. Cracker witnessed the crime. He saw it happen, and he heard it too. He's as valid a witness as the others. Objection. No, no, no. That bird is nothing but a pet animal. Referring to it as a mister will not change that. Objection! Humans are confused by magic, to the extent that they lose sight of what's real. That's what you said yourself, Inquisitor Zacharias Barnum. Objection! Calling me by my full name does not justify such brash foolishness. The, Inqu the Inquisition is against interrogating a parrot. By the way, kind, kind sirs, I, 
I suppose you should know that my dear companion never forgets a sound he hears. He remembers everything he hears, huh? That's definitely worth asking Mr. Mr. Cracker to testify. The court sees the situation as follows. The witness's testimony does not hold together. In fact, it is erratic. It, they are as erratic as that bard's songs. I can see. I can see. Uh, I can't remember his voice. I can see this trial getting, getting. I cannot see this trial getting any more confusing. Very well. The defense may summon this avian witness. Can you believe that? What type of Mr. Blissu is summoning a parent as witness? Summoning? Does he mean he's like how the familiar was summoned? Great. This is the fucking Twitter of courtrooms, dog. By hook or by crook, I'll do whatever I can to save Maya. Be it summoning a parrot or a familiar, whatever it takes, within the boundaries of the law, of course. Are we just gonna have the parrot? Hey! Um, alright, witness. Objection. Please state your name and- Not so fast. I hardly even know where to begin, but... First of all, what's the matter with the boy? He's looking quite pleased with himself. He looks like a cat that's gotten to the cream. Ah, that'd be me, wouldn't it? Don't mind me. Just think of me as a patch for Cracker, that's all. And just what is the purpose of pushing a bird? A parrot may be able to repeat what, what the others say, but it cannot talk on its own. It's precisely because Cracker doesn't talk on his own words that he's certain to tell us the truth. What? Cracker remembers every sound he hears, even just the once, with absolute perfection. So let's have him testify exactly what he heard. And if Cracker can repeat every every sound, I'd say this should be a valuable testimony. I cannot believe this is happening. We're testifying a parrot! <laughs> a witness cannot talk or will not lie either. This idea is much to my liking. Well then, may our new witness, Cracker, testify to the court. We wish to know exactly what you heard from the beginning of the incident. <sighs> oh god, he's staring at him. You see him? Look at the way he's staring at him. Deary, deary me. Objection. What the fuck? Ho oh, ho! Whoa! <laughs> whoa! The parrot's a witch! <laughs> oh shit, the parrot's a witch! The parrot was the culprit all along. What's this now? Why? Those are the sounds of the incident. Exactly as Cracker heard them. Ludicrous. Evidently, this has nothing. This is nothing but a fuss, after all. What do you mean, Inquisitor Bottom? I must admit, I found the pirate's testimony quite impressive. Even if the bird can accurately recall the sounds, it is clearly useless when it comes to the order of events. You mean there's a problem with the order? First, the witch used magic to turn the victim into gold. Then, the witness arrived. It is reasonable to assume they cried out in terror when they when they did so. And then, the testimony does not accurate. And yet, the testimony does not accurately convey such order of events. It starts with a with a sudden scream, followed by by the the door abruptly opening. And then a witness crying out. Next, we hear the victim having turned into gold falling down so far. So reasonable. The real issue is as follows. The parrot seems to think that the witch cast her spell after the witness entered. Such a suggestion is inconceivable. The reason is simple. At the time, the victim has already been turned into gold. Ah. Hmm, indeed. Hmm, indeed. It is as you say, Quizzer Bottom. 
The parrot's capacity for imitation is excellent. I will concede that its testimony does hold some entertainment value. However, this animal's testimony cannot be allowed to stand as proof in this honorable court of law. I mean, there has been an explanation for it, obviously, but... <clears throat> Stay hydrated. Don't write off Cracker just like that. Do you see how foolish you were to summon this parrot as a witness? Uh, not good, Phoenix. Not good at all. Should I really go through with this cross examination when it feels like everyone in this, in this court is against me? Uh, yeah? Yeah! The defense wishes to cross examine the witness. What? Are you serious? Did you not hear what I said? Are you, are you choosing to ignore my words? A witness that cannot talk cannot lie either. This parrot's testimony is the naked truth. He's simply repeating the sounds as he heard them. It's humans who make assumptions about the meaning of those sounds and arbitrarily decide whether the testimony is good or not. But as knights of the court, shouldn't we be striving to uncover the truth to which this parrot holds the key? The truth, you say? Very well. Show us the truth that this bird pur purportedly knows. Interrogate that parrot. Meanwhile, I shall enjoy the show. Will you? Will you do it, Mr. Wright? Uh, do you think it's hopeless? Um... <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> better you may interrogate the witness! Interrogate the witness! We are cross-examining the parrot. What, what a world we've come... That's the magic incantation, isn't it? Objection! Wait, he said Goldor. Isn't it Goldor? Aha! You're missing an, an L. Preposterous. At this stage, the victim was already on the floor. The transmutation spell had had to have been used much earlier than that. I wonder. Luke, what about you? Did you hear the incantation too? La 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 la! Fucking Christ. Hang on! Excuse me, Mr. Birdley? Oh, how may I help you, sir? I've been meaning to- Oh, wrong voice. I've been meaning to ask this before, but why did you still stand on the witness stand? Are you suggesting- Are you suggesting that I should leave my dear partner alone with strangers who, I, who cannot even sing? Huh? The very sight of Cracker causes the finest songs to effortlessly form in my mind. Stilton, cheddar or smoked cheese, I like my crackers with any of these. That was the Cracker song. Is it not crisp and full of flavor? Right, uh, anyway. Would you mind remaining quiet for the rest of the Cracker's process for examination? I suddenly got the munchies! Ahem, continue the interrogation! That... that's Maya screaming. Oh, yeah. I may have let out a teeny scream. Oh, wrong voice. I was so horrified when the, the professor suddenly turned into gold like that, right before my eyes. So that's when... Objection! The accused seems to yearn for the flame so much that she cannot wait to receive her punishment. If she wishes to live any longer, she will be wise to remain silent. Uh, I... I'm really sorry. I won't talk again, I promise. Unfortunately for you, Sir Blue Knight. There is no way you can prove that it was the voice of the accused. Objection! You're wrong, Quizzer. All we need to do is have her, vo her voice... Her voice... Her voice print... Her voice print analyze it. We'll have a straightaway... Oh, wait. Analyze what? A voice print? It's nothing. <laughs> Just forget about what he said. Oh boy. This world is driving me crazy. Well then, you may continue on with your interrogation. That was the sound of the door being opened? La, 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 la. 
What do you got to say for about, about this, hmm? Hang on! Mr. Birdly, can I ask you something? So many questions for Birdly the Bard, but most of them I shall disregard. I have felt your keen gaze upon me for a while now. You can't help admire me, can you? Uh, the statement you heard earlier. Was there anything you'd like to comment on? Hmm, I wonder if there was. My peerless companion, what do you think? Hang on! Hang on! Hang on! Hang on! Oh, Mr. Wright, he's imitating you perfectly. How adorable. I can't say I share your love for the bird, Espella. Especially if it, it feels like it's mocking me. Carry out your derogation. Okay. I I think we can all agree that this is this sounds like Miss Primstone, right? When I entered the room, we all kind of reacted in in surprise. La, 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 la. You have Hang a lot on. to say. <laughs> Mr. Birdly, can I ask you something? So many questions for Birdly, but most of them I shall disregard. I thought you can't remind me. No. Ah. That's what this is. God damn it! You're just here to be an obstacle. Hold it! Why are you here just to be an obstacle, dog? Wasting time. Stop! Shut up. Hmm. He seems to be saying, "Don't ask me, mate." What? The vendor is getting us nowhere. Uh, it would seem so, Your Honor. Uh, yeah, I can see that for myself. By the way, I was the only one who opened the door. I was worried about the professor, so I barged right into the room. Poor Luke. Give me, give me. Hold it. I think we get Miss Primstone. When we entered the room, we all kind of reacted in surprise. La, 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 la. But I guess the teacher's voice stifled all the rest. Miss Primstone is known for her sh stentorian, stentorian, stentorian voice of authority, allowing her to easily raise above the chatter of unruly children. Her voice would be, would, st would still be ringing in the pupils' ears long after the class had, had finished. Ah, uh, it takes me back. If only Maya's scream was, was as easily recognizable. Right, let's move on to the next sound. Clang. Hold it. That's that must be the sound of the professor falling over. I guess. Professor, la, 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 la. shut up! I'm not gonna listen to you. I guess it better not be. It'd be better not to pursue this one. Luke, you poor thing. Dodo. Clang. Hold it. Okay. Do you have something interesting to say about this? La, 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 la. Hey. hey. What do you guys say Hang about this? On. Mr. Burley, can I ask you something? Ah, oh, god damn it, you're so useless! Dodo! Dodo! That's the magic imitation. Roger is the thing is that his transmutation was used much earlier than that. I wonder. Luke, what about you? Did you hear the incantation too? La, 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 la. I'm sorry, I can't seem to remember. After after I saw the professor in that in that state, my memory of what happened just isn't that clear. I'm sorry, Luke. I know this is very famous for you. Anyhow. The important thing is that incantation. Somehow. I get the feeling that there's something odd about it. It just doesn't seem quite right. Do you think there's anything important in Mr. Cracker's testimony? Hmm. There does seem to be a fundamental problem with what he repeated. Why would he... Why would the incantation come after the... The professor was called... Told... To, to go... Do gold. What the fuck am I saying? But Mr. Cracker do, can't tell lies, right? Yeah. He can only repeat sounds that he's heard. 
Maybe he's misinterpreting. Maybe we're just misinterpreting Cracker's testimony. For the time being, let's take a look, another look at the court record in the Grand Grimoire. Yeah, I'm pretty... I'm actually... I'm... I said this as a joke earlier. I'm pretty sure it's the it's the Goldor thing, isn't it? He says Godor. He doesn't say Goldor. Godor. He says Godor. Godor! Gimme, gimme, me! Come on! Godor! Hold it! Oh, fuck. Objection! Whoops. I had to press the other thing. La 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 la! Hang on! Mr. Burley, can I ask you something? Uh, the, the question the um, Discord just asked ask the fucking parrot. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, you, the parrot's so cute. Uh, a spell is not that cute. It's fucking mocking me, all right? Girl, please. Godar! Hey. Objection! You didn't say Godar. You say Godor. Goldor. There's a critical contradiction in this testimony. We are all aware of that, Sir Blue Knight. This contradiction is between you, your so-called desire to find the truth and the fact that you're interrogating a parrot. That's not what I'm talking about, Inquisitor. There is a contradiction here that makes one particularly clear. The fact that we... The fact that we have, clear, we have clearly all made a wrong assumption. <laughs> How so? Luke... Can you ask Cracker to repeat the incantation one more time? R right, you are. Godor! Godor! Go Godor? According to the Grand Grimoire, the name of the gold trans transmutation spell is Goldor. Now, Inquisitor, it would seem to be that the spell that was just heard is in fact a different one completely. I never, I never, unbelievable, Goldor, Goldor. Objection. This is, this is ridiculous. That wretched bird must have misheard the incantation. Objection. No, 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 he remembers everything completely. Cracker is able to imitate sounds perfectly. The incantation was indeed misheard, but only by the people hearing it. Objection. The victim was found already in his golden state. That is proof enough that Goldor, that the Goldor spell was used. Objection! But you're forgetting that Cracker heard this incantation after that spell had been taken place, which makes it entirely possible that this Goldor spell was used as well. In other words, another spell besides the gold transmutation spell must have been used. Another spell that we haven't yet considered. Now, the next question needs to be asked is just what is this Goder spell? Objection! Utter foolishness! This is absurd. As convenient as it would be for you, there is no way a spell that by the name of Godor exists. Oh, Mr. Royd! Huh? What is it? I found it! The page about the spell! Godor. It's listed in the Grand Grimoire, right here. It exist, exist. What? 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 <laughs> oh fuck! Order, order. I demand order. Just like I thought. Cracker remembered it exactly. But then, what kind of magic is Godor? Well, my lord, the Grand Grimoire describes it in the following way. Godor. Creates a portal on a two on two sides of a green colored wall. The portal will disappear after five minutes. What the fuck? That's so specific. <laughs> oh, that 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 puts that puts Gene John in 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 suspicion. No. Oh shit. The, the portal will disappear after five minutes. Creates a portal on green colored walls. A portal spell. Mm. 
the spell Godor has been bookmarked in the Grain Grimoire. Aren't you, aren't you a lucky man? It appears even the Grand Grimoire is on your side. However, there is a fatal flaw in your explanation. Huh? What flaw is that, Inquisitor? It is really quite simple. Think back to how the, the alchemist study looked at the time of the incident. Do you remember any green walls? Because I do not. There were none. All the walls were coated in a white plaster. In other words, it was impossible to use Godor in that room. Huh? Hmm. I too. I haven't visited the alchemist study since the incident. I remember very well that all the walls in that room were a dull shade of white. Your little theory was interesting, Sir Night in Blue. But it is proven to be nothing more than that. A mere wild guest. As long as you can you cannot prove. As long as you cannot prove that this goat or used was spelled, your little or, or spell was used. What did I say? Your little theory shall be considered no further. In all honesty, I was very surprised to learn of the existence of this. I was very surprised to learn of us of such a spell's existence. However, as long as it was impossible to have used this spell in the crime scene, your deduction leads us nowhere. Then I'll ask you this now. Uh, yes, Your Honor? Do you, perchance, have any proof that you could show us? Can you prove that it was feasible for the witch to have used Gordor in that room? Yeah. The very, the one piece of evidence that we got from the room. <laughs> this is no coincidence. That spell must have been used in the crime scene. But do I have any proof that that is you possible for the youth scooter? Yeah. Naturally, I have proof. Of course I do. I'm a genius. I'm Phoenix Wright, dog. It's been on my it's been on my mind for a while. That inexplicable mark. It has it has to be the evidence that ties up all the loose ends. The defense wishes to present evidence. I'm, I'm, I'm impossible. Impossible. The determination in your eyes made me think you would. Now then. We shall allow the defense to present its evidence to court. Present the, the proof that this, the, the spell Gorder was used at the crime scene. Bing Take bong. That. Fuck your mom. <laughs> the walls in the study are coated with a, a white plaster. Not all of them, though. There is, a, there is one spot which is green. Oh, there is? I noticed it when investigating the crime scene. You may recall that there is a small, a small painting behind the desk, and for some reason, the wall behind the paint, behind the, the wall behind it was painted green. It, it was what? I recall seeing that painting myself. I, too. I recall seeing that painting myself too. If we look at the floor plan. I would say it's around here. Mr. Wright, I'll mark it on the floor plan. Thank you. It's been bothering me since I saw it. But now it's clear what it was. At the time of the incident, a portal was opened from behind that painting. In other words, that was the wall utilized for this, the spell Godor. Objection! You're certainly persistent. You just want a portal to be there so much, don't you? The wall behind the painting was green, and that's a fact. Incidentally, I remember that painting well. It was a small landscape piece. He has his own grimoire. About the size of, say, an open grand grimoire. Yes, I was about to say that size indeed. Small but adorable picture. Even if a portal had opened in that small patch of green, no person would be able to pass through it. In fact, they just about to be able to put their arm through at most. So will you please explain how a witch could possibly have escaped through such a such a portal this small? He's right, Mr. Wright. No one could have could have got through a portal that small. Have you anything to say? Or are you so crushed by the realization of your own mistake that words fail you fail you? 
the portal was too small for a person. It doesn't require too much thinking to figure that out. Huh? <laughs> but aside from that, a very obvious question remains. If it wasn't a human, then what could have passed through the portal? You... You have put an interesting spin on things. Why don't you answer your own question? You talk as if you know everything, so please, enlighten us. Let me just save. I am at full credibility right now, and I'm not gonna lose it, and I ain't gonna lose that now, you know? A small portal was opened in the wall at the, at the crime scene, and I have all the clues as to what, what that could mean. What went through the portal was... Small animal, uh, the witch, something else. No human could have passed through a portal that small. Even a witch couldn't have pulled that off. <laughs> so you're finally forsaking your mis for your mistaken assumptions. I haven't finished, Inquisitor. The fact remains that something else could have been passed through that portal. Oh, and what would that be, Sir Blue Knight? The portal was created after the professor had been turned into gold. The witch had a good reason behind that. She must have had to move something through the portal. You have captured my curiosity. I'd like to know what is passed through the portal. Tell us. Oh, uh, well, she, it, it was staff probably, <laughs> right? Jean, Jean, you fucked up. Jean, you fucked up, but you're a boy. <laughs> Jean's a boy. <laughs> The, this thing. Take that! <laughs> Considering that the state of the of the crime scene, there's just one possible answer, and that is the Talea Magica. Objection! What? What's this now? The Talea Magica was found at the, the crime scene. A portal has nothing to do with it. Objection! Inquisitor Barnum, you're making the wrong assumption wrong assumption. The witch wasn't trying to remove evidence from the crime scene. She wanted to plant it. She threw the witch's scepter into the room through that portal. Objection! You, you and your crazy theories, do you realize what you're saying? If she threw the, the staff into the room, that means... Exactly. She did it to deceive us. Her goal was to draw us in... draw us the wrong conclusions. The incident took place. When the incident took place, the witch wasn't in the room. Herself wasn't in the room. She cast a spell from outside. What? That's right. Man, y'all are still standing there? I thought everybody else would be gone. Or everybody else would be in. Order, 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 I say! Order! That's not all. There's even more proof that the staff was thrown into the room from the outside. What? What proof? Proof is none other than Layton's previously severed right arm. The victim's arm. How does that prove anything? None of the witnesses ever testified that they saw the witch's scepter. However, a few of them claim to have heard it rattling across the floor. That is right. Please, take a look at this floor plan. Since the arm was standing upright here, we know that the defendant couldn't have been the one to, to drop the scepter. Now, Think about it. Where would you need to drop the scepter from if, in order for it to end up here? Uh, oh! <laughs> That's right. The scepter could only come from the, the small portal created from the spell Godor. Yep. Gene, 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 Gene fucked us. This is most unexpected. The witch wasn't in the room when the crime occurred. Or at least, that's the defense's claim. That's the only thing that can exp that explains all the tr the contradictions we've run into. Objection! Sir Blue Knight, with that imagination of yours, you could you could aspire to write a fantasy write fantasy stories. Nice try. I miss. I I must admit. Holy crap! I can't read. However, this line of assertion is futile. There's a glaring contradiction in your words. Another contradiction. Whatever could you be referring to, Quizzer Barnum? 
This is a Talaya Magica that was used in the incident. In this incident. As we can establish, there are two magic gems in it. One for the gold transmu transmutation spell, Goldor. And one for the shadow familiar spell, Familia. The witch in possession of the sash of the staff would not have been able to cast Godor. Yeah. Yes, you're absolutely right. But, you can't write off all the evidence supporting my theory as a mere coincidence. Why must you, why must your agreement always be followed up by a but? What I'm getting at is, this Talea Magica is not genuine. N not genuine? That's right. And naturally, the one responsible for this deception is the real culprit of this crime. Enough of the suspense! It is too much for a man of my age. The defense shall reveal what is meant by this so-called deception. Does the does does it look different? No, the gems look the same. Do they? Do they look the same? I can't I this has four sides, this um Goldor. It's a four-sided, um, triangle. Or a pyramid. It's a pyramid with a square at the bottom. <laughs> I think so, right? One, two, three, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Jean, John, you fucked us. You fucked us. God damn it. I knew I couldn't trust him. Her? Because the way we're going, we're assuming they're a witch. <laughs> right? Am I stupid? This part of the staff is a deception. What? I don't know. What part of the staff is a deception? It's one of the gems. I don't I don't know which one. The gold ore is deception. I'm thinking it may be the gold or magic gem. What? The gold or magic gem is fake? Think about it. Staffs that turn stuff into gold? I mean, that stuff is only in fairy tales, right? Is it time to make us... Oh, whoops. Whoops, he's... It's the other... Oh, it's the other gem. It's easy to say. Is, is it the other gem? The other gem that wasn't used. Got it! God damn it. Ugh, God. First, I want to clarify one thing. Can we be certain that the Talea Magica in question is authentic? Without a doubt. The metal rod in the center of the in the center is called the sp sp spina. S the spina magica. <laughs> spina magica. The witch's mark on the tip is clearly visible and highly detailed. It is impossible to forge, even by the finest craftsmen in, craftsmen in all Labyrinthia. I can guarantee you with uh, its authentic authenticity. That uh. Hair portal! Hair portal! <laughs> they can put their head against any wall and it's just like, Portal! Go! <laughs> That leaves us with one possibility. The forgery in question is the familia is the familia familia magic gem. W what? A, a forged magic gem. Objection. That is an insult to our investigators. Objection. Only witches can use the power of these magic gems, can't they? So tell me, 
How can you know whether a magic gem is real or not? Objection! Hold it right there. We know for certain that the spell Goldor was used. It is undoubtedly not Forge. But what about Famalia? Did anyone actually see a familiar in the crime scene? Th that That's... Three months ago, when the investigation carried out into Sir Belduk's death, the results yielded the following conclusion. My, like, my throat is, feels like it's gonna, like, fucking jump up. The familiar, the spell familiar has been, has been used to summon a familiar, which in turn carried out the murder. And the witch used exact, used, the, and the witch used exactly that to her advantage. Another sim similar incident at the same crime scene. Don't you think that would be the perfect opportunity for the witch to frame the defendant for her crimes? The defendant would would be blamed for both the professor and Sir Belduc's death, and she'd be taken for the real witch. Oh. That was the real culprit's objective. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh shit. Oh, fuck! <laughs> there is a chapter of the Magic Archive, an old collection. An old collection of the Tale of the Occult. About the way to test whether, whether or not a magic gem is genuine. How can we test it, my lord? It's very simple. A genuine magic crystal is composed of a mineral with a low density that is, that is of that of pure water. All you need to do is see if the gemstone floats on water. That is simple indeed. Any non-magical materials in our world, with the exception of sepiolite and a few other special kinds, sink in water. These eerily sparkling magic gems, however, will never sink when put into water. Bailiff, remove these magic gems from for immediate examination. The magic gems are fake. What's up with this trial? This is not how it's supposed to be. It's all right, darling. Don't cry. You'll get to see a witch burning today. Sir Barnum never disappoints. Hush now. There, the what the fuck? You guys are cruel, all of you. Thinking, thinking, burning witches is all right. Burning anybody is all right. Defender, if your theory is correct. This could be the biggest occult crime in history. But another important question remains. I wonder if you can answer it. Who is the supposed real witch that threw the Talea Magica into the, through the portal? The real witch. There's only one person that comes to mind. Frankly, I still find it hard to believe, but it's the only possibility. Once I in indict her, there's no turning back. Knowing the consequences, should I, should I give her them? Give them her name? Mr. Wright. In Labyrinthia, witches are punished by fire. I know, I know you think that's going too far, but even in a world that seems so insane to you, those who take the lives of others must be punished. That's universal law, isn't it? The witch turned the professor into a gold statue. And that's not all. She took the life of the alchemist too. And now she's trying to pin, pin the whole thing on Maya. I just can't let her get away with that. Well then, defense. I'd like to hear your theory, but before I hear your theory, we are going to save because I, I, I don't know. I feel. Am I going to mess up? I, I know who it is. We know who it is. Let us hear your theory. Who is the witch responsible for using Goldor and then throwing the, the sep, the scepter through the re resulting portal? It was Miss Primstone. No, it was Jean Grail. God Take damn it. That. When, you, when you've eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be true. <laughs> Barnum! It was Barnum! <laughs> Barnum did it! Ew. <laughs> Ew. Ew. Where, is he even in the court records? He probably isn't. God damn it, he isn't. It was the bird! The bird's the witch! <laughs> <laughs> There's only one po logical possibility, and it has to be that person. The real witch is Jean Grayerl. 
Hmm, huh? Jing Rao? <laughs> I've heard that name from her. Wait. Is that the butler who served his family? That's correct. Objection! Psh, what is this about? You seem to love rolling out these ridiculous suggestions, but you ignore the obvious. Jean Grey Earl is male! He is a man! <laughs> Inquisitor Barnum, let me ask, tell me one thing. Is it only females who can be witches? Are you daft? Of course it's only females. Nevertheless, never in the court of his or the history of this court has there ever been a, a male witch. You're so utterly ignorant. You should be ashamed of yourself. All right. Well, let's ask another question. Is is Jean Grey really a man? <laughs> huh? What? What a ludicrous question. The defense is certain. That Dream Girl is the witch responsible for using magic on Professor Layton. Objection! Will you stop fooling around? This is a groundless ac accusation. Objection! Groundless? You say? I'm afraid that's where you're wrong. Huh? Huh? At the time of the crime, Jean Grail was in the room next to the alchemist's study. And one of the walls in that very room was painted green. It, it was? That's what, what's more, that green wall was the one adjacent to Sir Belduc's study. Wh what? This is madness! Inquisitor Bottom! Quickly bring that butler summoned to the court! Have Jean Grail brought here immediately! S certainly, my lord. It shall be done. Oh, shit! Sh uh, there? He? <laughs> there is no need for that. Oh, shit! I am here. I shall come down right away. Hey. Ah, it's you! It, it's, it's, it's the accused person. Well then, Mr. Wright. Shall we begin? You speak like a robot. Shall we begin our battle <laughs> of wits? <laughs> Jean Grey Earl. It would seem that the show has turned a new direction. I think we all need to take a bit of time. A bit of time to take it in. We shall take a brief intermission. Inquisition, defense, sharpen your swords and wits and prepare yourselves for the next stage of this battle. Yes, your honor. It shall be done, my lord. By the time we resume, this examination into the golden gem shall be should have ended as well. Now, the court is adjourned for a brief intermission. Oh shit. And with that being said, it it, it seems like now is the time we end stream. Right? 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 Right, Jimmy, just... Right. No! Wait! No! Oh, shit! No! Ah, fuck! Wait, hold up! God damn it! Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck, really? <laughs> Thank God we just saved. Before that... Before that choice. Hold up. We're we're gonna do this again real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well then let's hear your theory. Who is you? It was you! Yes, 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 yes. Jean Grey, uh yep, uh that's correct. I'm like, nope, that's a boy! And like what? Can are you sure it could only be boys? We've only ever had girl witches. You're ignorant, you fucking idiot. And I'm like, oh, fuck your gender standards. Is he really a boy? The defense is certain. He. 
The defense Objection. is certain that the he is a she and that she must be Objection. in date. <laughs> I'm painting. She painted all green. She, she fucked everything up. Everything's fucked up now. You understand? I can't believe we never thought of this. There is there is no need. Uh hello. I am here. Mr. Boy Girl well, Girl then. Miss Miss Girl <laughs> Miss Girl Boy <laughs> Girl <laughs> Miss Miss Girl <laughs> Uh yep. And okay. And with that being said. We will save that half of the trial for next week. If I'm being honest, a part of me really wants to keep playing. But uh, my throat is fucked. <laughs> Damn. Okay, uh, no, we don't want to look at this. Don't look at that. I, yeah, a part of me really wants to... Oh, wait, let me turn on the audio. Turn on. There you go. Miss who? A girl. Boy? Person. Yeah, a part of me really wants to keep playing, but I uh, my throat is actually giving out. Yo, dog. The judges... The judge's voice is the hardest to do. It, it's always been the hardest, and I... <laughs> I do I need to change it? Probably. <laughs> it's It doesn't feel good for me. <laughs> oh my throat what the fuck yeah oh uh, shit okay but uh yeah i am one parched two uh hungry three tired <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, um, <clears throat> uh, what, do I have any plans for anything else? Not really. I've been so stagnant when it comes to just, like, other content. <laughs> and, like, I've been, and all, all you need is, is consistency on streaming, and, like, if you want to grow, you just add some other stuff. And uh, yeah, I haven't been adding the other stuff, so I want to work on some more stuff. Um, the reason why I haven't like edited anything, right? Even though like, <laughs> even though I'm like, oh, there's so many ideas I have. I I have to take the time to learn Adobe Premiere now, because um, I've said this like this is probably the third time I said this. I lost my my Sony Vegas. <laughs> So, I kind of, kind of fucked. I was kind of, I'm kind of fucked when it comes to video editing, and then like music is just like I'm trying. Oh my god, I'm trying to figure out this thing with my mic, right? <laughs> it's funny. I she just make everyone sound like Toad. <laughs> toad is what hurts, dog. <laughs> Keep it consistent. Fuck. <laughs> you called it objection! <laughs> you're wrong! No, you're wrong, fucker! <laughs> she, she made the portal and put it through a thing! No! But she's a boy! <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
that'd be fun. But yeah, that hurts. I hurt you. It hurts quite a bit to do. Ah, uh, but yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, I've been trying to figure out this thing with my mic, right? Um. Yeah, that, except for four hours. You're great! <laughs> Fucking wonderful, am I right? But, uh, yeah, I uh, Yeah, there's this thing with, like, my mic. I mean, I've noticed it recently, mainly because... Don't tell them. Don't... Don't tell them I said this, right? But... There's... There's a group that I'm in, right? <laughs> and, and... And I've, I've, I've always said that I'm, like, kind of a lurker, right? I, you know, I have my social issues and stuff like that, you know? Speaking of that, I'll, I'll touch on that in a bit, but, um, they started mixing, right? Our mixer started mixing the song because, because we, it, it all got timed in tune by our leader, which, uh, bless that team, by the way. I only wish them the best. I'm a lowly vocal only, so I just sit here, right? Here's the thing, right? <laughs> uh, so they started mixing it, right? Man, they're having such a hard time. They said this explicitly about my vocals. They're having such a hard time mixing me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, really? And and they were like, Hase, he has like this really like warm voice. And like his, but his mic is so muddy. And I'm just like, it, it, it is? And I'm just like, What? Am I have I been recording wrong the entire time? And so I'm like I'm like trying to figure it out. I'm like now I'm like going on this like soul searching like hunt, right? Of just like have I been using have I been using my microphone wrong for the past three years? <laughs> and has it and is that why I've never been I've never been um satisfied with the way I mix my stuff you know what I mean like it's like I I never thought about it like that but like now that it's now that like someone has said it like pretty plainly to me at least not not even to me but just like in general right I'm just like huh I should really look into that and I'm looking I'm like really looking hard but you know it, it's gonna have its drawbacks as well so gonna look into that also speaking of uh the whole like lurking thing right i on twitter right there is this um there's this um thing there's this trend going around it's like one of those bingo things one of those bingo things but it's for like music peeps right and like what like it was like oh what about this what about these music or it's like stereotype not stereotypes stereotypes is the right word but it's like traits that most that people attribute to music the most right or like musicians and like their upbringing mm. and one of the one of the things right i didn't do it myself right but one of the things is like social anxiety and i'm like Oh yeah, if I did that, I I that probably be the biggest one, right? Every I I and I'm being dead serious. Every single person that I've seen done that didn't didn't fill that in. <laughs> and I'm like am I and I was thinking about it. I was like, "Huh. Am I re am I am I one? Okay, am I one overestimating the hold that social anxiety has on people, right? On most people. Because if I'm being honest, I think it's, I think a lot of people have it like me. Or I've thought like that, right? I'm just like, oh, everybody has their thing, you know? It, it just happens. <laughs> and I understand that, right? But yeah, am I, am I one, overestimating how much of a hold it has on people? And two, am I underestimating my own experiences with it? <laughs> and I'm just like, Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm like, honestly, I'm not taking it too seriously, but I'm, I'm, but like, it's a thought that like, ever since I like started seeing it more, like on my feet, I'm just like, really? Huh? 
if I'm being honest, I expected most people to have it. <laughs> you know? I, like, I... I'm just like, everybody, it should be on everybody's thing. I'm like, I, I thought everybody dealt with it. No. <laughs> Apparently, everybody doesn't. <laughs> and that's the wildest thing to me. I, because I can't imagine. I, I can't even imagine what it's like to not have it, <laughs> you know? It's a spectrum. It's not kind of an off and off thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? Or that's what I'm trying. I think. Yeah, it's very much like a, it's like a an extreme or not extreme thing. Or. Yeah, it it, it you're wh wherever on the line you are, right? And that's what I'm saying. I'm like. I what I expected was everybody kind of being like. Everywhere. Oh yeah. I did, uh, maybe I did see it as like kind of like two extremes, right? Instead of it seeing like as like a line with like multiple dots like throughout the line, I saw it as clusters on each side, right? And like there are like a few people that are like transitioning between them is, is what I saw it like. And I'm just like, wow. That's not good, though. <laughs> I'm suppressing it. Is it good? It probably is. Anxiety. Anxiety is like its own thing, really. But yeah, it's just like... Wow. That's... That's crazy. <laughs> you know? I feel like... I feel like even though I give off this, like... Like, streaming specifically. I give off this, like... A very, like... I don't know. I, I don't. I wouldn't say like youthful, but I give off a very open vibe. The dumb, uh, young and dumb is the way I describe myself. If I had to, right? Like, like, like if you ever saw my stream, the way I hold myself on stream and the way I hold myself in like, like servers is always different because I just, because I just. Cause, Cause I have those problems. Yo, Yodo and Dodo. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I don't type a lot in chat rooms. Like I, 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 cause one, I don't feel the need to, and two, I like, I'm just like, I should I, t I, I type like if I ever feel the need to type a message, I type the message, and then I, then I, there's a send button, and I just, I sit there. I sit there thinking about it, and like I'm like, should I send it? Should I send it? Should I send it? That's not normal. <laughs> That's not normal. <laughs> like most people would just be like, "Yeet, <laughs> have a message, read it, woo," <laughs> you know. But like me personally, I'm like, <sighs> if I say this. Do do it do do I send this? Do I, do I full send it? <laughs> like that's what that's what it's like for me all the time. That's why I'm so bad at typing, dog. That's why I'm so bad. I don't I don't have like the experience that other people have from like just like texting and chat rooms, you know? The only experience I have from typing, like from like a younger age, was like typing documents for school. That's it. <laughs> I am so unbelievably bad at keyboards <laughs> compared to everybody else. Like, really? <laughs> it's kind of funny, like, that it works that way, though. Because of this, this happens. That's the most, like, clear-cut, like, oh, I'm really bad at this because I can't do this or I don't do this, you know? It's always been like that. <laughs> but, yeah. I absolutely hate it. I, I, hate, I hate a lot of it. Because it's hindering my own... Not experience. Here's the thing. I I think because of it, I've learned... If there's something that I, I have learned, it's to have fun with myself. Not like... Hold up. Pause. <laughs> I've learned to just like... 
find ways that I, I could have fun without needing other people. Is what I mean, right? And that's why I find streaming really easy. <laughs> Most of the time, it's just me. <laughs> and I'm just like... <laughs> a fucker, <laughs> you know? And like... And, and uh, like... Specifically with... With Uncheated, Uncheated, bless him. But like... I just like... That just happened to click with him in, in that community. I'm very lucky in that regard. But yeah, it like it's like yeah, I've I've it's the I can't talk, but like it's always been like my worst when it comes to like content creation, it, like my my worst traits have always been like per like perfectionism and like my lack of connections. My lack of developing connections. It that's always been my worst things. Always. It's always been I feel like everybody has like a perfectionism, perfectionism issue, but I just like, for me, it's always been like, oh, in the eyes of others. Instead, instead of me wanting to be perfect for myself, right? I see it as a perfect, to be perfect for other people. You know, that's, that's how I've always seen it, right? I don't know. It might just be trying to make myself sound different, right? <laughs> But that, that's just how it's always been. Ah, uh, but yeah. It, yeah, I just wanted to say that. It was, was kind of crazy when I when I saw everything. I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know? What the hell? <laughs> it, like, it's this... It's the same reason why I don't play team-based games. Or why I don't play team-based games by myself. Or like matchmaking games, it's that same. It's that same thing. It, <laughs> I I have I have matchmaking anxiety, and I'm just like I can't I can't do it. I I can't. <laughs> That's why I always at least need a duo. When it comes to playing those games, I can never solo queue or whatever. Eternally returning, exactly. That's why I was like, why did you get rid of solos? <laughs> Like, uh, why? Why have you done so? But yeah, I would just say I have it pretty bad. <laughs> I have it pretty bad. It's okay. I don't, it doesn't really show when I'm streaming, so it's fine. <laughs> Because Johan means... Look, Johan means can do it. They chose that life, dog. They can win. They chose him. <laughs> uh, and even if they did have a problem with it, the teams were still available. Like, solos are straight up just not anymore. They're, they're just gone. It's whatever. I don't care. I still like that game, but... I don't know. It, it's, been, it's been dying down. Again, recently. But yeah. I've come to the conclusion that I just have it worse than people. And that's that's okay. That's that's okay. But yeah, uh, okay. I'm just gonna end stream here then. Okay, so just to talk about things in the future. Today is Saturday, right? So next stream is gonna be uh Fire Emblem Tuesday. Fire Emblem Tuesdays. I might try to stream before that. No promises. We have to wait for the next version. I don't even know what the next version is. All I know is that there's a robot girl that got introduced, and I'm like, cool. Or was she a robot? She might just be a sniper with like cyber tech stuff. But yeah. Uh yeah. Farm Tuesdays. I might try to do a um another stream before that just so we can finish the game. <laughs> Goddamn. But yeah, next 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 Farm Tuesday is gonna be <laughs> is gonna be the three month anniversary for Fire Emblem Tuesdays. Woo! Fire Emblem Tuesdays! Yeah! Woo! Yay! Yeah, so that'll be fun. And then, uh, Thursdays? Fuck if I know. <laughs> do I know? I don't, probably. I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm gonna do on Thursday. We'll see. Maybe it's Stardew. Maybe do Stardew again. Stardew, 
I, I I think Stardew has been introduced with some new ideas that I want to look into. Maybe. And then we'll do and then the process will repeat for eternity. And then uh when we finish Fire Emblem, we'll go to the next Fire Emblem game. And then when we finish Phoenix Fight, we'll go to the next game. Which uh, I have in my pocket. Right here. Right here in my pocket. So yeah, wild phone with that. So uh, with that being said, I will uh, head out for now. So thank you everybody for watching. Uh, whoever is still here, thank you for stopping by. I don't know who it is. It might be, I don't know, a boy. Is it, is it boy, orphan, and, and hollow? Or is it, is it you three that are here? <laughs> I think orphan is here. I didn't draw you pockets. Yeah, it's you. I <laughs> just... Why why did you have to point that out? Now I don't have pockets, man. Oh, what what pocket was I holding it in then? Oh god. Oh god. I, I got to go. I got to Oh god. Uh, uh thanks you for sorry. Bye. I'll see y'all uh I'll see y'all whenever. I might just go to sleep honestly. I'm really tired. <laughs> All right, I'll see y'all. Let me just There you go. Bye bye.